everyone logs in. Today we're... I really love this chandelier, to be honest with you. Isn't this a gorgeous chandelier? And the font is just gorgeous. Whatever. <clears throat> no, they see what's on the left, on the right, program. And preview is what... But it, there's a delay, that's why. Yeah, hear that delay? <laughs> uh, Maham is driving. Careful. She's texting while driving. Instagramming while driving. I'm putting two questions now so Ryan can repeat them. We'll answer them now while people are uh, still logging in. We'll just, we might as well just answer them all right. Your Maham's questions right now while everyone logs in and, and gets here. So Maham, put them in now. You have 60 seconds. Actually, just uh, 30 seconds, huh? <laughs> yeah, while you're driving. Hurry up. You know, the British, they don't, they're really intolerant of accidents. Intolerant? Yeah. Really? Like, dri uh, they're driving, um, to get a, a license there is really hard. Like, people fail the test all the time. And that's why in England, you won't go around seeing beat up cars. Yeah. It's just one of those things you observe when you're there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, look at, I, it's so funny some of these um, these liberals when they get involved in talking to us, right? So she says, you don't want liberals telling Muslims what to do and in liberal spaces. She says to me back, some woman who's got a like, terrible... Right no, this is an exchange. This is the person I'm talking to. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, why would you put that as your profile pic? This is a Muslim person? No. Oh, okay. Some regular liberal woman. Oh, okay. uh, presumably, Muslims should keep out of liberal spaces too. Trust me, we want no part of your spaces. You will never see me at a pride parade telling you guys to, to, to stop. To, to keep us out of yeah. So she said, okay. You need to make your voices heard. Let people know that Islam is an intolerant ideology opposed to equality and freedom. Right? What's this on Twitter? Twitter. Idiots on Twitter. <laughs> I reply, okay, thanks for your advice on how to run my religion. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, but we are very... that. I mean, why isn't intolerance a thing? Like, I'm not tolerant of certain behavior. You're not tolerant of certain behavior. You're not tolerant of Nazis. Right? We're not tolerant of Nazis either. But you're not tolerant of Nazis. You're not tolerant of a lot of things. Right? So why is your things, your list of intolerances acceptable? My list of intolerances are not. Isn't it like the whole, the destruction, the paradox of it is that they're intolerant of intolerance? That's, a, that's the whole paradox. <laughs> your intolerance of intolerance. So you, there, you, people could be intolerant for a lot of reasons. Right? And, and it's good, it's praiseworthy. Right. Well, the, the 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 whole thing that argues sometimes is uh, their intolerance are against things that are harmful, whereas our in, our intolerance is is harmful right? against other people's behavior. Yeah. So, like, if they're intolerant against Nazis because Nazism is harmful, but yeah. if you're, but if Muslims are intolerant against, you know, whatever else, whatever millions of things that you could possibly be intolerant against in the, on the left. Uh, it's be, then we're the ones being harmful yeah. by being we're you know by being these are not these are not harmful things so why would you be intolerant so um, all, their whole logic yeah so then why is it the epistemology that intellect and human basically um, uh, agreement or whatever mm -hmm. consensus is a source of knowing good and bad and this book is not a source mm -hmm. right on one hand. So, because that, that's the main difference. Because right. we all agree we should avoid the bad and do the good. Right. But what is good and bad? Right. Who deter who determines what's good and bad? Right. Well, that's exactly it. Like that's they, the they, That's they the question. They feel that they know what's yeah. good and bad. So they say, if well, we say, no, we're against this. Then, oh, you don't know what's good and bad. You're being intolerant. Yeah. We say, well, God's book. They say, well, God's book isn't real. It was made by a man. I said, okay, then. Then why is he, <laughs> why can't I use his reason? Right. Then it's equal. Then. Because yeah. they're saying reason only. Right. Only intellect can tell us what's good and bad. We say, no, God tells us what's good and bad. 
and here's his book. He said, that book is not uh, from God. God doesn't exist. That book is from a man. I said, okay, then why not follow his intellect? Why can, if Muhammad, they say, well, Muhammad wrote the Quran. Okay, then why can't I follow it? He's a man just like you're a man. Because, right, because it's outdated. <laughs> yeah, we update our values while you still stay. Stay, stay yeah. Says say the constitutionalist. Well, anyway. I mean, <laughs> I mean, in the span of if we zoom out to human existence or existence in general, according to their claims, how many years have we been around? Hundreds yeah. of thousands of years. So fourteen hundred years is, is pretty updated, yeah. right? That's very <laughs> updated, right? Oh man, these people. One of the, uh, our, our Jannah, inshallah ta'ala, if we ever earn Allah's mercy to go into it or to enter into it, we be earned by dealing with your nonsense for how many years we walk on the earth and have to deal with you people. So you guys are actually good, right? Uh, because we're going to, if we ever earn Allah's mercy, we should be hopeful that we, are, we will, our ranks in paradise, we will be able to say we dealt with American liberals. <laughs> Right, the Bani Israel, they will come. We dealt with Moses, right? Sayyidina Nuh will say, I dealt with the first with the pagans, right? The original Gen 1 of paganism. Sayyidina Ibrahim, I dealt with Nimrod, Nimrod. Sayyidina Isa, I dealt with the rabbis. Mm -hmm. Well, the Romans are innocent, the rabbis are the ones who plotted everything together, right? We're gonna say, hey, like, uh, Mehmet Fatih is gonna say, We dealt with the Byzantines. Uh, Salah al -Din, I dealt with the Crusaders. We're going to say we dealt with the left, right? <laughs> the liberal left of the, of the 2020s and the 2000s. And they're going to be like, subhanAllah, give him more Jannah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, subhanAllah, these people. All right, let's look it up here. Prince Matthew, yo, assalamu alaikum. That's a new greeting. Waikum salam, ya Matthew. Um, you should reply to that woman saying, that's not very tolerant or liberal of you. You're right. That's the paradox that we're talking about. Aziz Azada says, Assalamu alaikum all. You know about this sister? She's always on the streams. Sister Aziz. Yeah. All right. Let's, today we are finishing up. Okay. Um, today we are finishing up Surah at takathur or we're not finishing up. Like we didn't even get deep into it. So we said, Al-Hakum at which means you're constantly trying to increase and gather more wealth until this has destroyed you. This has caused you to be destroyed. Which means that um, by competing with this wealth, or amassing this wealth, it distracted you from what really saves you. And that's really one of the issues of wealth, even that it can affect a Muslim, is that and Hakum al could affect us because if, by, by trying to amass wealth, you left off what really saves you. Okay? What really saves you is uh, the moral things related to deen. Secondly, Hatta Zurtum al Maqabr means that you collected wealth until your grave. And that's a blame because most people, commonsensically, you know that you're going to die. So why would you keep doing this until your death? What's the point of continuing this until your death? All right? We're, by the way, Ryan will do our sponsors, and, and everyone stay tuned to show you some pictures. Amazing, beautiful pictures. Right after Surah Tukathur, we're going to go to our sponsors. I'm going to show you some pictures of a book that we got today, exclusive, okay, that there's such beautiful pictures. I don't have the book. He didn't give me a copy yet. But we're going to show you uh, the audience pictures, and they're beautiful pictures. Um, so, like, you know that you're leaving. So, at least, here's another thing. How about enjoying your wealth? Some people amass wealth, even in a time where they reach a point where if you were to liberally spend your money, you couldn't spend the money you have. And yet you're still trying to amass more. It's an addiction. So there, there are a lot of people out there from the rich who, if they were to stop working right now, and they pay all their expenses and all their taxes, they would still have... And they would do anything possibly that they wanted to do. They could not possibly spend all their money before they die. If they died at a reasonable age of, let's say, between 80 and 90. Or statistically. Right? But they still try to gather money. And they still work. And they still... Like, I was uh, with the officer yesterday. And he was saying that he does rounds 
around the bodegas, right? And he said, there's a guy who started with one bodega, got a second bodega, third bodega. Okay, bodega, for those who don't know, it's like a little, little uh, quickie mart, basically. It sells you little things, drinks, uh, snacks, stuff like that. They also sell cigarettes, lottery tickets, and other things that are obviously haram, but that's basically the bodega. So he got one, he got a second one, he got a third one, and he just keeps saving up every few years, get another one, save up, get another one. He's now a multimillionaire owning tons, like dozens of bodegas, okay, throughout New Jersey. Now, the cop was saying that he has to do rounds on these areas because they're not safe areas. So he goes one day and he sees the guy, he's an old man now, he sees him stocking the shelves and uh, charging the customers. He's like, man, why are you still doing this? You're the owner of like dozens of bodegas. Why are you here stocking shelves? It's like, are you, you're clearly not incompetent because if you can own these, pay the taxes, pay all the licensing, whatever, deal with the vendors and hire the managers, you're clearly not incompetent. Are you trying to save money by doing the job yourself rather than having someone else do it, right? So the guy said, stop doing this stuff. Just spend your money, right? Enjoy this money because you're old now. But still, it's a disease that people have, okay, that they have to keep uh, to cathar, amassing money after a while. And I, and, and I met another guy. He's uh, from our, one of our friends in Chicago. He said that his, his, he, his brother's father-in-law is also a rags-to-riches guy that says to them, he, he trains them in business because he's so good at business. He says to them, do not be like me. I have an addiction. I cannot see anything without starting a business because he has the ability to fund the capital. He knows how to run businesses. For example, you see something like this. Like he doesn't see this and see what we see. What do we see? A, a case, a charger for, for headphones. He, he opens it, looks at it. And then he, he get, picks up his phone. Hey, takes a picture. People in China. How much can you manufacture this for? And then goes to like target how much is it selling for, right? And then contacts uh, someone else to start a business selling these. Like he cannot see something without thinking that. Now, I think that's very good in the beginning of your life. Because you have to make money, right? But at the end of your life, you have a disease. If you haven't learned, and that's what we talked about yesterday, aql must tell nefs no, enough. Like, like yesterday's, con the context of it was that yesterday we were saying that the AI is learning to speak with emotive language, okay? And, and, and robots are now being built with emotional face, emotive faces that evoke sympathy. It is from the ignorance of a person to treat such an animal, such a creature with sympathy, okay? And I'm telling you, people, I'm not, tafadl, salam, just fix these pillows and move that uh, sinham, Okay. All right. The movie Chappie, Chappie, I know people that almost cried. And I'm telling you, you would get emotionally attached to the robot because the robot was created with emotions, was made by the people. And we're allowed to say created, right? Even though Allah is the creator of everything because Allah himself says about Sayyidina Isa that you create birds and you blow the spirit in it or you create the image of the bird. Right? So we're creating an image. There's no soul in these things. So that's what we said. Your, your heart will eventually sympathize with something that's not even real. You're wasting your energy. Okay? And, so, and that's what the movie Her is all about. Right? Where you, you heard about this movie, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a long time ago. Maybe like three years ago. So, which is a long time ago. <laughs> but the technology is probably all outdated that they used in the movie. <laughs> but um, is Ahmad's mic on? All right, come close to your mic if you want to talk. Um, so the idea is intellect must say to the nefs yes or no at some point. And that's the value of aql. As aql is what tells us, you know, like, no, the sympathy is not placed here. You're wasting your emotions. This is nothing other than a chunk of metal, right? This is, uh, it's not a soul. It's not a nefs that you sympathize with. This is the problem of consciousness. Yeah. With... Uh, of hard consciousness, like the biological, there are people that, especially, you know, like you're ultra atheist, so I'll argue that your consciousness is like, uh, it's part of your, it's, it's like what's wired into you. 
right? It's just your brain, the neurons firing, that's consciousness. Yeah. Because the, the, they, they don't want to believe in a concept of a soul. But even secular philosophers will, like, argue. Like, one famous one in, like, the recent years is uh, John R. Serlau, mm-hmm. I believe. Uh, he, is, he wrote a book called The Mystery of Consciousness. F- fantastic book. But he argues that consciousness fundamentally must be immaterial. Thank you. That's a great point. And one of the, uh, it's, if you want to go into it a little bit? Yeah, go ahead. So there's a, he proposes like a thought experiment. John, yeah. uh, John uh, I'm not sure if this is his, but it's, it's like there are many versions of this, like the Chinese room yeah. uh, and the, the Chinese population. Let's go like the Chinese population one, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's the idea of like imagine the Chinese population, you have all 1 billion people, right? Or 1.5 billion people, right? And they all, each person has a flashlight and they turn the flashlight on and off. And this is to communicate to the next person, right? About like, oh, do this, do that, do that. Like, think of it, uh, I flash a flashlight to you. That means you want to go, you flashlight a flash, flashlight to someone else. Okay. Right? They, they used to do that when the city was in danger. I light a fire. Yes. You, you see my, like, I'm at the, uh, uh, on the, uh, the city wall. No. You see it, you light a fire, then fires exactly. all around. It's like a, a haystack. Okay. So the, the question that he poses is like, is any one of these, any one of these individuals conscious over the entire population of them Hmm. and the example that and what he's trying to propose is that no neuron or group of neurons can be conscious over all groups of neurons right because then it's just then there there has to be something above like just the light switches on and off because that's what neurons fundamentally are right they they do one thing yes no yes no i mean like this is not consciousness yeah i love uh another example that he gives is like of the translator right about of, a, of the Chinese translator. Oh, okay. So yeah. say you're sitting in a room and there's like room shut box. There's only one thing that a slip comes in and then you have to give a slip out. Okay. Right? And you, they, they slip in a piece of Chinese to you and then you go, you have a big dictionary of Chinese phrases and then for each phrase that you get, you find it in the book and then you give a response from, okay. from the dictionary that, that you're given. Yeah. Okay. And then so you get a slip in, you write a slip, you copy it from the dictionary, and you translate, and you slip it out. But do you ever understand? Are you conscious of the translation that's taking place? No, you're not. Yeah. You're just repeating. You're just repeating exactly what you've been programmed or you've been told to do. Exactly. So like these, he tries to give like these sort of thought experiments to be like, it's fundamentally impossible that these neurons, your your biology... Is a source of consciousness. Is a source of consciousness. Uh, That's a great example. And the the idea, though, that... This is a debatable issue. For us, it's not a debatable issue. No. It has, does not have a soul, right? Yeah. Um, there should be no guilt, legal guilt, nor moral guilt, nor spiritual guilt. If I was to take a robot, right, and remove the head mm. or place it in like an incinerator, mash up the metal and sell the metal. But I, we mark my word, guarantee you that in the future... There will be movements that hold these robots that they have to be treated with certain human rights. Um, the ijma right. of like current scientists basically is that like they know that they fundamentally can't make a claim about this. Yeah. Like the ijma is like there's no evidence to support this or to go against this. Like we don't have any information about this. But what about human the the masses of people? The masses of people. Yeah, this is a different story, yeah. right? Because they're convinced of they're convinced of like the hard. The hard consciousness is what is the term used to explain like biological, like people that believe that consciousness is derived from biology. Yeah. This is the, the term used as hard consciousness. This is like, this is like a very fringe thing within like the actual scientific yeah. and philosophical community. Here's an experiment. Uh, you get a bunch of nice robots and then um, you have some robots speaking in a re- regular robotic tone and some speaking with a like advanced human like tone mm. which is very likely in the future if robots are able to uh, uh, access YouTube and learn from YouTube there that's that's which pretty they much already have, yeah, yeah, right? they right now. now green the robot and you, the experimenter says to the to the to the subject turn the robot off right mm-hmm. and he goes up to the robot turns it off right and then tells another set uh, of people turn the robot off and as soon as he's reaching near the robot, the robot says, no, 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 don't t- 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 turn me off. <laughs> Give me five more seconds of life. And see if the people react, right? See if there's a delay. You do this a thousand times with one and a thousand times another. Guarantee people, a lot of people will be like, 
I feel bad doing this. And then get the pulse of people. Uh, after they hear that voice, whether they turn it off or delay, get their pulse. There must be some change in the human being because our subconscious will react to that. So uh, the idea of being human and having aql is that not all subconscious feelings are to be obeyed. Right? Not all subconscious feelings mm-hmm. are to be followed. And there are sometimes you have to say to your intellect, that's enough. No. The, 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 the lead we took before you came here was that there are people who, because they're capable of making money, they continue to make money until death, as opposed to saying, this is enough money for me, I should enjoy it now. Mm. I should use the money. What's the point of making money, right? If not using it, right? Or spending it. So that's the idea. And I, uh, uh, well, you, they could probably argue back is that my joy is making money, right? Running a business is my joy, right? Then you need to be like, we need to tell you. Also, revelation will also tell you some joys that you're, just because your nefs tells you something mm. is a joy, doesn't mean it's a good joy for you. It's not good for you, yeah. right? So, al hakamu Tukathur is that. That in, at some point, making a ton of money cannot be your hobby. Your hobby right? That should not be something that takes up your... Your joy should be in something else. Right? And Allah tells us, Especially when you're getting older, right? You, you can't indulge that joy. And that's the whole point of what deen is, is that it's not just intellect, it's revelation, which directs intellect over the nafs. That's what Sayyidina Ibn Abbas says, Nurun ala nur, is revelation over intellect, dictating nafs. Mm. And, some, and we don't just follow our emotions. That's why the idea that, oh, this is in nature. Oh, we found homosexuality in nature. We found this in nature. We found mothers killing its babies in nature. Whatever we find in nature, it has no difference. It makes not, doesn't matter to us at all. Yeah. Because we're not that. We rise above. Human beings, I mean... Well, I mean, think about it. We rise above a lot of natural things. To yeah. natural instinct. Any animal, they have gas. That's release it. But we don't, right? <laughs> because of orf. <laughs> right? Orf is a source of knowledge. Customs. No. Human customs. At least most of us. Right? Most of us, <laughs> right? Human, that's an example. Someone says, what's custom in, in Sharia? But this is a custom. There's no verse in Hadith that says don't do that. Right? <laughs> but it's customs. What murbil orf? Um, make law by or by customs so there's we're always contradicting our sub our our, our uh, uh, subconscious or our emotional self or yeah. nefs or what they would call in their psychology their id right yeah right or ego or whatever they want to call it and interestingly on this point right it's like even things like slot like during certain times yeah. like praying nawafil is discouraged makuru <laughs> Like That's very true. strongly discouraged. Yeah. Like, and so like even if like you have to control your nafs, even if, even if you enjoy the taste of salah so much, yeah. like you still have to follow. It's not about like the enjoyment that you experience. It's exactly. following Allah's commands. That's which is, what it is. It's yeah. about followership. Also, you can't make du'a and ruku, right? How <laughs> yeah. much does Allah love du'a? You're not allowed to make du'a and ruku. It's makru. It's makru to make du'a after the Imam says Allahu Akbar before he recites fatah. You're supposed to wait for Surah Al Fatah. Wait for the next surah. After he's finished the surah, or if it's a silent prayer, then you may make du'a. But, like, du'a is limited. Quran itself, we don't recite Quran in sujood. So this is more, the test is not about enjoyment and not enjoyment. Right? No. Mm-hmm. It's about obedience. And what you had asked me the other day about seeking the joy of dhikr and the sweetness of dhikr, the limit is, it is secondary to obedience because the joy of dhikr the sweetness of dhikr the tumanina of dhikr may come to a person but he may be obligated to do something that is not joyful at all right it's like get up get up early and do a chore that you have to do for your one of your dependents for example yeah or your boss asks you i don't want to do this right but it doesn't make a difference it's obedience to allah first seeking happiness in ibadah second so even seeking happiness in ibadah it has it's after obedience. And Allah may command you to do something that has no sweetness to it. When Sayyidina no. Ali was asked, what's the best deed we could do? He said, the one you hate to do. The act of obedience that you hate to do. That's the best for you. On the, on the topic of, of the nature, yeah. that argument's actually been like completely misinterpreted from historic times. Because yeah. the word nature itself is different from like how the, like the, from like the Middle Ages to the 
kind of uh, this the century of the Enlightenment, like the meaning has changed over time. So when in the past people said like the word nature comes from the Latin word of uh, natura, which okay. means and which then comes from uh, Gnoski, which is gna- so? which comes from Gnas- okay. Gnoski, Gnoski. Gn- Gnoski or Gnoski. Okay. My Latin pronunciation isn't great. Uh, Gnosis. No, uh, no, no, no. Gnoski is like. It's like birth, reproduction. Oh, okay. Uh, and in that sense, nature is kind of the forward-moving force of reproduction, like yeah. being productive, basically. Uh, and so that's why I say it's Mother Earth. Because mm. Mother Earth is always moving forward, it's right? Forward. It's always producing things and producing food, producing plants, producing yeah. people. It's always, it's a force that's constantly pushing forward, yeah. right? Uh, so if you read... Um, Dante's Inferno, right? Mm-hmm. I think the in this is obviously like you know we don't believe in this stuff, but yeah. in in his book in the seventh level of hell, he describes like it's for the people that commit crimes against nature, mm. and the modern interpretation of this would be like people that go and like cut down trees or like you oh, know okay. like kill endangered destroying but, the earth. But what? But the people that he that he described are in that are number one, people that uh, that are users, mm-hmm. right? They use riba. And the second group that he described are homosexuals. Why, why are these people committing crimes against nature? Because the activities that they're doing oh. are fundamentally unproductive in society. Yeah, yeah. So, like homosexuals, you're using a sexual urge, right? A natural, an, an no urge benefit. that exists with it, with no benefit. Exactly. Like, yeah. This is supposed to be used to procreate and create life yeah. on Earth, but you're you're now diverting that energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, into something that's unproductive. You're, you're not cut cre- off lineages. Exactly. You're cutting yeah. off lineages. You're not creating lineage. Uh, and same thing with Riba, obviously. So like how, you're not- why hasn't he been canceled? Well, I don't think the Christians accept... Uh, Dante. No, the liberals. Why haven't they canceled him? <laughs> Is he read in, in schools? Is he on syllabi in schools? Dante I feel like in the definitely. more liberal arts schools, they... They, they read him? They, they definitely... I've heard of people who read... I don't know if they read it for school, but I know a lot of people have... Have canceled him? No, I've read it. Well, they got to cancel him if they're going to be consistent. He's got you all in hell. <laughs> but, so when they say like... <laughs> in the seventh level, by the way. Like, you're the worst. <laughs> so like when they say like the homosexuality is a crime against nature, people... It's not like, oh, the lions are, are, are not homo... Like, it's not about that, right? Yeah. That's, that's not what a crime against nature is meant to be. And that's not what the... Like, even the... I don't think the Christians even understand. Like when they... Yeah. In their books when it says crimes against nature. It's not about... You're going against like the plants and the trees and... Uh. <laughs> You're going against. You're doing production, something. Yes, exactly. So it's everything that that should naturally produce and doesn't. Exactly. And uh, uh, the, the the idea of the lions is that one they they saw a picture of two main lions having sex, but the guy says no. In this area, the female has a mane. There is no such thing as a lion that has, in the case of lions, has oh. done this. There's no homosexual lion. They will not do it. Right, they physically cannot do it. <laughs> the male lion will not allow another man, male lion, scratch on his back, his back like that. And the male will not have it. There is no chemical attraction. So yeah. he says that lion, that's on the bottom, is a female. It's, and this type of lion has a mane. The females have manes. So that's refuted. Yeah. ثم رد الله عليهم فقال then Allah replied كلا لَيْسَ الْأَمْرُ بِالتَّكَاثُرُ right? Meaning, كَلَّ meaning no. Your, your happiness is not going to come by amassing your wealth, nor will it benefit you anything. سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ okay. وَعِيد There's promises and threats. وَعَدْ and وَعِيد وَعَدْ of Allah is always نَافِذ If Allah promises you something good, it will always come. You will never uh, get a... Uh, 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 that Allah takes back His promises the way humans do, but the wa'id, because Allah is generous, is hanging in the balance. When Allah threatens you with a sentencing of a punishment, that punishment is hanging in the balance. Why? Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that Allah forgives all sins except shirk. Okay, all right. As in Allah yaghfiru dunuba jamia. Allah forgives all sins except dying upon the rejection of faith. That means that his threats are hanging in the balance. He may do it and he may not do it. Okay. Then it is repeated. But every repetition in the Quran must have some subtle difference. 
قال الحسن ومقاتل وهو وعيد بعد وعيد threat after threat to emphasize it but it means you will also know the end result of this amassment of wealth and this boasting one and the other okay when death occurs you will realize it was to no avail the haq said kalla sawfa ta'lamun yani al kuffar thumma kalla sawfa ta'lamun yani al mu'minin right so he means here that it's repeated twice because it's for two separate groups meaning it's for the kuffar first but also the muslims who do such behavior too they get a share of that threat mm. okay and the threat of the kafir and the mu'min is subtly different in that the threat of the kafir is for an eternal punishment with the anger of allah ta'ala the threat to a mu'min is for a temporary punishment and with the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his tawbah right. right allah ta'ala wants them to make tawbah otherwise he would not have gifted them with the gift of iman so if someone has iman but they have sins the wa'id to them is to bring them back into ta'a so they could fulfill istikmal al-iman la yakmu la yu'minu ahadukum the all the hadith of none of you truly believe until means your iman is not complete like mm. your iman is deficient until you do these things kalla law ta'lamuna ilm al-yaqeen Lo, nay, if you only have knowledge of, if you had ilm al yaqeen, certainty based upon knowledge, okay, ilm al yaqeen, and for adaf al ilm ila al yaqeen, kaqawlihi lahu lahu al haq al yaqeen. So the the connection of knowledge to yaqeen is this is mahduf a lo ta'alamun ilm al yaqeen. So if you had certainty that is based upon knowledge because there's certainty that is not based upon knowledge right and that certainty is weak mm. so someone said oh, i'm absolutely certain what's your basis of your certainty in emotion the best way to to answer people who are ignorant and the sign of the ignorant is he places yaqeen where there is no evidence no that's a sign of the ignorant and that's why allah calls it ilm al yaqeen can you prove it okay i just had a debate with somebody uh, uh, on um, it wasn't really much of a debate I was just asking him his opinion on things because I found it sort of to be honest with you interesting slash entertaining he told me why are you promoting hajj but hajj is haram <laughs> I only answered with questions hajj is haram he said yes because they were requiring the COVID vaccine and there are fatwa saying that you're not allowed to require the COVID vaccine so he said Okay, even if someone believed as a, as a law that it was forbidden to require another Muslim to take a shot, what does that have to do with Hajj? No. Well, he said, because, because they required it, making Hajj itself becomes haram. So we say, so. You say it's haram to require it for Hajj or just to require it in general? Requ- there's fatwa that requiring people to take a vaccine is haram. Period. Yeah, it's haram to make it a requirement. Okay. Right? That's a fatwa. Fatwa is not a rule; it's just a fatwa, right? Okay. So he's saying because. So I said, "Brother, the meningitis vaccine has been required for ages, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And the scholars still go." He said, "There's a difference." I said, "What's the difference?" He said, "COVID doesn't exist." I said, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> Done with this conversation, right? I mean, I'm sure he's a good brother and everything, but so no one wants to believe me. He says, "Okay, maybe because you don't have evidence." No. <laughs> have you brought evidence? Right? Use evidence. So, Al Jahl, and it's not to call this brother Jahl because I have Hassan Dani is a good Muslim brother, but one of the signs of Jahl, and you'll see it amongst the ignorant people, is taking like putting my heart and soul in something. There's no evidence. There's no basis. No. And that's what the Juhal do, and that's why they get disappointed so badly, and their 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 faith shatters. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be in Islam; it could be in anything. Like you put so much into emotion and my and your life into an idea or into a concept that it is not even you know uh, uh, has no basis no. so that's so when you talk about ilm al yaqeen is that our yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be based upon knowledge mm. and the knowledge that Allah speaks of in the phrase ilm al yaqeen is the knowledge that that we read mm. that we hear from shiukh and scholars and it's transmitted knowledge Okay, study of Quran, study of Hadith, why this deen is true. 
That's called ilm al yaqeen. Until your mind says there is no other way out of existence, explaining our existence, it is necessary to believe in an unseen or in, in a creator that is outside the laws of the universe. That is, I should say, transcendent beyond the laws of the universe. Because the laws of the universe came to being. They didn't always exist. Mm -hmm. They came into being. What's the proof of that? The proof of that is that the material of which the laws act came into existence. They didn't exist forever. So if the material itself did not exist forever, the law can't exist forever. right? The law of nature cannot exist forever. So we know that. Therefore, there must be a creator that, that exists transcendent beyond the laws uh, of the universe. And then you look into the life of the Prophet ﷺ until you conclude he's a true messenger because his prophecies are real. His prophecies are correct. Right? On top of that, his, his revelation. When you have a person, neither is he insane, nor was he a poet, nor was he a researcher. Where did you get this information from? The knowledge that he brought, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, must have come from an outside source. Mm -hmm. No education, right? High level of education in Mecca. Yeah. Uh, the Prophet is known never to have read a book. He never cracked a book. He never attended lectures. If he attended lectures, why didn't he give lectures? Mm -hmm. Right? Before the age of 40, he'd never attend lectures. You can't have somebody attend lectures, learn have a skill and not manifest that skill. Like if you have knowledge on something, this is one of the things, it is almost impossible to have knowledge on something and not release it. Because mm -hmm. knowledge itself, uh, if you notice, knowledge itself, it's, it's, it's an, it bottles up and it's going to explode until you release it. Allah has created knowledge that way. Mm -hmm. it's, that's why secrets are really hard to keep. And some people even say they're unhealthy. Right? It's unhealthy to have a secret. That's why uh, a lot of uh, sinful addictions one of the reasons this is really bad for your, your physical health even, not just your mental health and emotional health, is because you're keeping a secret. You're harboring a secret about yourself, right? So, so it's impossible to have all this knowledge and not say anything, right? Yeah. And then suddenly, after basically a man is totally, we know everything about the character and about the main skills and qualities of a man by the, by the time he's 40, Right? And we have, there's zero evidence or record or any time that the Prophet gave speeches, spoke of knowledge, right? Gave guidance, made moves in society. Zero. Never did it. Then all of a sudden it turns on. And it turns on in such a way that he refuses to stop. Like if you did something for the first time at the age of 40, no prior history, chances are at first obstacle, you would stop. You would think twice about this, right? You wouldn't have the sudden persistence, right? The persistence that, re a level of persistence that would be like revealed, like the level of a veteran uh, businessman or a veteran athlete, someone who's been doing this for years and has quit, come back, quit, come back. So all of that, you would have certain knowledge that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa this in historical individual is a prophet from Allah. So you, you bolt that in. That's ilm al yaqeen. Yeah. So... Can someone go from Ayn al mm -hmm. like meaning they see the, the physical world around us as like signs of, of, of Allah, right? And um, they, can they go from Ayn al directly to um, Al Haq al Yaqeen? Okay. So, Ayn al Yaqeen is taking transmitted evidence, studying it with our brains, and coming to a conclusion this is Haq and believing it because uh, the, the rational knowledge. Rational approach to things is like sticking a, a, a massive, one of these humongous screws and screwing cement into the earth, right? No. It's never going to come out. It's like that. Then Ayn al yaqeen is when you start seeing the promises and the fruits of this faith. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a promise mm. and says, whoever utters istighfar, Surah Nuh, Allah will bless him with rizq and with children. To say, okay, well, Ilm al Yaqeen tells me this book is true. Now that I haven't seen these promises happen, let me now try it. With faith. I know this is going to work. So to make istighfar, 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 all of a sudden, my life, my financial life before istighfar and after istighfar is night and day. So I now have seen the promise of Allah come true. Right? That's Ayn al Yaqeen. I've seen it come true. Right? That is now a deeper level than. 
علم اليقين many 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 Muslims exist at that level without the علم اليقين many yeah. many grandmas grandfathers villagers if you ask them what's the proof that you follow this deen they will immediately point to the fact that oh the promises of Allah are always true I made dua and I received the answer oh. right they seem to always go to that <laughs> And they cannot put a pen to paper of why it's true, right? <laughs> That's the common Muslim, right? And then haq al yaqeen when you're like a walking reality of this deen, right? It's haq al yaqeen So Ghazali said it's almost like hearing about a fire, seeing the fire, and then feeling the heat of the fire. That's what it is. And, and, and because the signs of Allah Ta'ala are always manifesting in life, coming about, the old common Muslim that did not study the deen. They had deep iman because one of them is seeing death. How many people witnessing the death of, elder, of an elder and seeing that elder going to a, a type of state that indicates the truth of the promises of the deen, yeah. such as claiming to see malaika. Right? It, happen, it happens a lot and these don't have to be ulama. They're regular Muslims, but between themselves and Allah, they clean their heart, and Allah loved them, right? So at their death, the family around them, they saw karamat for this person. Okay? Karamat is not just from some big turban and making claims that he's a Sufi. No. All these regular Muslims. So a lot of, a lot of the common Muslims, their iman is based upon that, that witnessing. We saw it ourselves, right? Straight witnessing. But ilm al yaqeen is also important because philosophers can play tricks with you. Yeah. And shaitan can play tricks with you. And you have, we all have a shaitan that's connected to us that is um, called our... Um, uh, huh? Qareen. Qareen. Yeah. Qareen meaning he's with you all the time. His job is to make you doubt iman. Committing sins is only the precursor to that. Committing sins is almost like making you uh, fog up your windshield, what he really wants you to do is, is to crash the car. So fogging up the windshield or muddying up the windshield is only a precursor to that. But it's weak because you could just turn the, 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 frost. the defrost on. You could just turn on the, um, the, the, the wipers. You turn the wipers on, right? That's toba. I turn the wipers on, the defrost, I can see. No matter how many times if I sinned, if my wipers are gone, I'm still good. If I'm making toba, I'm still good. His real job is to make you doubt the truth. So this is the importance of the phrase ilm al yaqeen having knowledge. Okay. And he is saying that in specific the ilm al yaqeen that a person should have is to know that is the point of resurrection. So it's not the point simply just Islam is true, it's the emphasis of resurrection. Okay. Emphasis of resurrection. All right. Uh, naturalistic fallacy, Saras Asule, he says a point which I love, which we should emphasize all the way, uh, all the time. N the naturalistic fallacy, which is what they always use by the atheists, is that just because something is a certain way, it doesn't mean it has to be that way. Right? Mm. So it's as if what the atheists use, is their, their default is that the, the way that nature is. It's as if it's a default that has existed like that forever. Yeah. We say there is no default. If Allah wanted this, the sky in space for us to see to be white, could have been white. If the sun to shine black, it could have shined black. Right? The sun could re have released blackness. Mm -hmm. And the natural space of the earth, like when you look into outer space, could have been white. And the moon could have been orange. Mm -hmm. Anything could have, could have been in any way, shape, and form. Right? So their thing is that it's Aristotle, basically. This dunya, this world is wajib al wujud. It has to be like this. It's always like this. We say wajib al wujud is necessarily existent like this. We say Allah is wajib al wujud and the, and the earth as we know it, the universe as we know it, is only the way it is because Allah wanted it that way. It could have been a million different ways. Okay. Next, la tarawunna al jahim. You will see al jahim. And here, uh, Qatad is saying that when we talk about yaqeen, it is the yaqeen of the resurrection. And that yaqeen of the, of the death and resurrection is the great reliever of anxieties. It's mm. a great reliever of anxieties. Because 
things are not always going to be the way we want them to be. And we get to say about that, at the very least, had to do you short, right? If things don't go my way, well, it's short anyway. Yeah. You try to make things go your way, and Allah encourages us. Dua, don't stop, keep going. But if it doesn't go my way, it's a short life. We're all just going to pass through. al jahim, and it is true. We will all see jahim. How will we all see it? Because we have to pass over the bridge. Yeah. Part of the phases of the day of judgment is a sirat. We pass over the the bridge, and under that bridge is the hellfire. If you pass over it, you'll never enter hellfire. All right? Uh, well, I should make a comment that if you pass over it, you will not enter hellfire eternally. Because the mubtadiyah in our religion, those who have innovated in the beliefs and they've rejected explicit verses, we call them mubtadiyah, they pass their sirat if they were pious. They were pious, but they're innovators, right? So we, the, 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 the hadith is admitting their existence. And he's an innovator in his creed, but he's pious. He prayed and he fasted and he avoided zina. He passes the sirat. When he arrives at the fountain of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the angels say, "Not that, not him." فَإِنَّهُ قَدْ بَدَّلَ وَغَيَّرَ He altered this deen after you. Okay. Now the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam doesn't know that. Now we say, "Wait a second. Don't we say that the Prophet that the Prophet has shown our deeds, the Ummah?" Or are our deeds are shown to the Messenger? It's a hadith, yes. Which that goes to show, once someone has entered bid'ah, they're not received, they don't receive that honor. There is an honor that our deeds are shown to the Prophet. Why is that? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِنْ وَجَدْتَ خَيْرًا حَمَدْتَ اللَّهِ وَإِنْ وَجَدْتَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ اسْتَغْفَرْتُ لَكُمْ If I see good, I thank Allah. If I see other than that, I seek istighfar for you. So that... Once we have parted from his sunnah in beliefs, then we are no longer afforded his istighfar. So that's min ahl al bid'ah. They don't have the honor that their deeds are shown to the Prophet ﷺ. Otherwise, he would have known. I know you're a muqtada because I've seen your deeds. So then, he then says, okay, or the other interpretation is yes, the Prophet ﷺ, his only istighfar is for, ahl, for the people of his sunnah. But he does have a knowledge without making istighfar of Ahlul Bid'ah and that the statement of the Mala'ika is not reflective of... Uh, uh, it's almost as if saying you don't know as like uh, rhetorically. Like you don't know how bad. Not you don't literally don't know. Like, you don't know how bad they've changed things afterwards. So, and Allah knows best what is the correct interpretation. But that's the... the and then the Prophet Sallallahu said Fasuqqan, Fasuqqan, Fasuqqan. Now, you have the messenger of mercy. Paradise is behind him. Hellfire is in front of him. And he's saying, go, away from me. Away where? There's no neutral site. It's heaven or it's hell. Hence, al mubtadiah are past the bridge, but then they're sent back. Right? And they will be punished for a period of time. But we also do not believe that the mu'min, the one who believes in Allah and his messenger, and the kafir, cannot be the same. No. So the Mubtadi'ah eventually, one, as the shiuch say, one day in an eternity. Right? Meaning after a long period of punishment that they receive for bid'ah. Okay, then, and we're not, we're talking about the bid'ah of aqa'id, beliefs, not the bid'ah of action. Bid'ah of actions is sins, considered sins. Mm. The bid'ah of actions, which we should fight, but they're sins. The bid'ah of aqa'id, of beliefs, altering the beliefs of Islam. Right? Then at that point, um, uh, it's uh, the, the, one day in an eternity they'll be removed, but they will be punished in the hellfire, right? So um, that's the, 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 ex, the extreme danger of messing around with aqidah, right? And that's why if you have your right aqidah, deeds can always be fixed. If you have the wrong aqidah, right, deeds don't matter. Your deeds are not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. So that's why. Studying aqid is the most important thing. So you were see thumma la tarawna ayna la tarawna ayna al yaqin. Then he points to ayna al yaqin. Okay, you're gonna know about the hellfire. You're gonna see it with your own two eyes. Thumma la tusalunna yom idin an al naim. Then you will be asked about the naim. Muqatil says, "Kuffar Mecca kanu fi dunya fi al khairi wa nima." Kuffar, they're in benefit and they're in blessing. 
So what does this tell us? Just because you're rich and successful doesn't mean you're right about mm-hmm. things. You can be totally wrong about things. Okay, so um, God bless America. We're number one. This is the Protestant myth that if God loves someone, he makes them rich. It's like one of the strands of Protestantism. And the sociologist talks about why did America succeed? They said the Protestant ethic. Okay, And that uh, if God loves you, he makes you rich. If you love God, work hard. right? Save your money. Stuff like that. So that ended up with a concept of looking down on the poor. Right? And that's not right. A uh, question yes, uh, uh, related to this is, do we have uh, a concept in our deen of like the continuity of the deen? Like through you, your lineage, like your, your, your kids, your grandkids, mm-hmm. your, your great-grandkids. Like this is this a sign of like uh, acceptance? hundred percent. Continuity of, of Iman in your lineage is one of the greatest gifts that Allah can give people. No. And it's mentioned that um, by Ibn Abbas that the dua of a person will, will go down, will hover over seven generations. So that if you have one righteous person, it's not necessarily the next generation will be as enthusiastic about the truth as he is. Doesn't necessarily mean the second, but within second, third, fourth, up to the seventh, that dua, that dua will land upon somebody and he will be a light for that, for that lineage. So it's almost like a rope, uh, like a, a cord, one of those uh, Christmas lights, right? And it lights up, minimum every seven generations, right? And that's why the lineages of Sahaba still exist until today. You don't think they made dua for their lineage? The lineage of the Prophet I suddenly exists. And a good lineage will have Islam pop up every once in a while. Even, I believe, and Allah knows best, a lot of the people who entered Islam, um, Americans, maybe their forefathers were slaves and made dua for them. Like, why them and not others? It could be. Who knows, right? That, uh, I mean, it's very clearly it popped up in one population, not another. Like, why didn't it pop up in the Irish? Why, the Irish were a sub you know, culture that was not necessarily welcome at the table. They were poor. Of course, they didn't, weren't, weren't treated like slaves, but why don't we see this burst of Islam amongst the Irish? Why do we see it in, amongst African Americans? Mm-hmm. And we know that 20% of those slaves, about one in five, was a Muslim. Yeah. So, it, it shouldn't surprise us that eventually the Islam will pop up yeah. in these lineages, come back. And people don't realize, the best. like seven generations ago, yeah. Is, is, is quite a long time ago. It's a long time. <laughs> and it's the scary thing about life is that we're forgotten so quickly. Like, who here knows anything about their great-grandmother? Oh, let me ask you this. Do you have a single grandparent that you know nothing about? Like, we have, everyone's got four grandparents. Yeah. Guaranteed, there's one of them at least you know nothing about. To the point that sometimes you have to try to think, what's their name? <laughs> right? Like... And this is before pictures. No. So you truly know nothing about them. It's funny. I actually tried tried looking, the, like asking my grandparents yeah. um, and my parents and stuff. And they uh, surprisingly don't have much. Yeah. Informa- like even about like, like, for example, my parents, their grandparents, yeah. which would be my great grandparents. Even they don't. Know. They don't know. I yeah. mean, they, like some Maybe stories they and stuff like that. Yeah. But like from time to time. Uh, like, like for example, ever I totally talk, talked about this with you before, like about knowing how I how I knew that I had like uh, like more Sufiish lineage, yeah. right? Because when we came here, we weren't really yeah. practicing Tasawwuf. But I realized later uh, when we did that Qasida Borda, yeah. And remember that night we did the Qasida Borda whole thing like over a course yeah. of an hour and change. And I re- I had recorded some of it, so I showed it to my mom, and mom said, "Oh, my grandfather used to do this at his house for a gathering." And I said, "Wow, this, this is not, never knew." Subhanallah. <laughs> so it popped up quicker than once usual, a week. Right? It's like once a week he would gather people in his home in, in Egypt, entire right? Right? and he would do this entire Buddha wow. for an hour. So, so that's how, all I know, and I try to like find more about him. And I'm no. like, think how freaky this is, right? Okay. Like you have a son named we both have sons named Ayub. <laughs> Can you imagine, like down to fifty years from now? our sons will be dads, right? They'll be older dads, too. Like They'll be yeah. in the middle of their dad life. So they're going to have kids running around. Now, this kid that you raised, and you know everything about, and you change your diaper, and you and your kid are like this, right? Can you now imagine that his kids well, no, don't even know who you are? Yeah. I mean, how... So, 
if my own flesh and blood is going to forget about me, yeah. who's going to care about me? Yeah. Who's going to care about me? Right? SubhanAllah, that if that's the case of what this Hayat dunya is, then what's the point of it? If your own closest people to you have forgotten about you, and you live with your parents for so long, how many times does your parents talk about their parents? It's not going to be ever, like all, a regular thing. Right. This goes to prove that Hayat dunya people are worried about what's in front of them at this moment. Not necessarily because they want to, because they have to, right? They're worried about this moment in time, okay? And they forget about everything else. So if Hayat dunya this world that we're living in, is going to kiss me goodbye that quickly, right? Why am I investing so much in it? And truly, the only ones who are remembered are the ones Allah has put the qaboot in their hearts, no. right? So, and they're not remembered by their family. I wonder if, let's say, the lineage of Abu Hanifa, where it is. But I'm sure that, guaranteed, the bulk of people who remember him and love him are not from his family, no. right? So, subhanAllah. <laughs> Crazy. Oh, sorry. Yeah. One to add on to that is like, can this broad, like, can this more broadly be applied to movements? Yeah. And like, uh, oh, totally. In the deen. Yeah. Totally. So, uh, in Tareem, I remember a lecture that uh, Habib Omar gave. Hmm. He said, "This we have been Shafi'iyah practicing the Sunnah since uh, Al Muhajir Ahmad ibn Isa. That's the first one who came in. He bought Al Madhab al Shafi'i with him, hmm. and he bought like Ilm of Ahl Sunnah with him. Okay." And Al-Faqih Al-Muqaddam, the scholar they call the, the first teacher, basically, first scholar amongst them, he came a little a couple generations later. He's Muhammad ibn Ali Ba'alawi. And he brought the books of Ghazali. He mm. said, we're, we're Shafi'iyah, Ash'ariyah, and Ghazali. Okay? Mm -hmm. They've had that for a thousand years. Right? One thousand years. That has been what's education, what education is. You memorize the Qur'an. You have majadis of hadith. They have majadis where they read all the hadith. Just read through hadith. Okay? Mm -hmm. And their fiqh is shafi. Their aqidah is on Abu al-Hasan al-Ash'ari. And their tasawus from Ghazali. So he said then, the Zaydeen came, the, Zay the Ziyud they call them. The Ziyud, they came, they lasted 80 years, they left. The Shia, the Shia. The Shia of the north, of no. Sana'a. He said then came the Marxists. In the next generation. They came and they left. <laughs> and the Salafiyya came. They came, rumbled, make some trouble, and gone. Out. Every group comes in, causes some trouble, out. Comes in, out. Right? No. And when we look at this, right, which is a sign of falsehood, is that you come in, make some noise, you leave. It's amazing that falsehood removes falsehood. It's not just that truth <laughs> removes falsehood. Right? So truth removes falsehood, but falsehood also removes falsehood. So uh, first gen, what do they call it? First wave feminism, where is it? It's gone. It's laughed at. Second wave feminism, gone. Third wave feminism. Yeah. It, it, one relieves the other. And then transgenderism removes all of feminism. It really negates yeah, all yeah, of feminism. Yeah, it does. It right? Does. Yeah. So because if you can't even define you know, what the gender you're talking about is, what is the feminine? You can't even define it anymore because of transgenderism. So no, that's how. It's, it's, it, was, it was gender roles don't exist. And yeah. then transgenderism. Okay, yeah, gender roles do exist. It depends on what gender role you identify. Yeah. <laughs> so and then gender itself. Like, yeah. they've broken it up. Uh, they no. blew it up. So, it's not just that truth removes falsehood. Falsehood removes falsehood. So we don't have to even do half the work, right? <laughs> so, uh, subhanAllah, that uh, all of these movements come and go. There, there will never... Now, the, the basic ethos of Marxism does exist. The idea that it's the victim group and the... Now, in his context, it was financial, and it was controlling the means of production. It, you can just transfer that same paradigm to everything else, right? Mm -hmm. So that paradigm does exist, but in his context, it doesn't exist anymore, right? No one's going to try the experiment of the Soviet Union. You, exp you tried the experiment after World War you know, II, maybe before that slightly, before World War II, actually. Between the World Wars, you tried that experiment. By 1990, you were out the window. No one's going to try this experiment again. Because it's such a massive scale. And you did have massive feats. So if that failed, nothing will ever work again. Yeah. The Prophet said, the Persians, so. the Persian czars and stuff, or whatever they call them. Once he goes down, there'll never be another one. And he said, the, the Byzantine, when they go down, there'll never be another one. Right? So they come and they go. But you look at who's upholding the deen of 
the, the, uh, you know, the aqidah of Islam. Mm. It's upheld everywhere you go, right? State or no state. Actually, we prefer this experiment of no state to see if this is genuinely upheld by humans, by people, or is it only a state-sponsored thing? So that's why when say, oh, well, where's the Islamic State? If you're so good, why don't you have a government? And this is by Allah's design. To prove to the world, to demonstration, we will uphold it without a state. Because it's genuinely in our hearts. I think um, Sheikh Noor, in one of his, the, his, his notes and translator's blog, he yeah. wrote about, like, he, he was like, one of the silver linings of the fall of the Ottoman Empire is the fact that the hearts of the West have been opened up to Islam. Because yeah. if the Ottoman Empire still existed... Like this whole, like it's that's true. It's a thing of the East. This that's just true. Muslim things, but now it's like Islam is transformed to be a yeah. more universal thing, that's and now true. the hearts of the West are like even after nine eleven, the mass con- like people converted yeah. in mass, and and even now like it's incredible seeing the influx of people towards Islam. Yeah, and it's like there's no seriously organized doubt. That's the exactly proof, yeah. right? <laughs> that's a further proof. <laughs> All right, they never, they didn't give shukr to the ni'mah. You are the boon ala tarik shukr, says Al Hassan. And Abdul Ibn Mas'ud, he narrates a hadith, marf- he says, La tus alun nayoma idin an al naim means al amnu wa siha. The basis of ni'mah is security from your home being broken down into property rights mm-hmm. and security and to have health, which includes food because you can't have health without food right but health is broader than food you could have a lot of food but you don't have health so if your body's healthy and you feel secure in your home realize that this is a major ni'mah, a major blessing and in order for this blessing to be revived Allah Ta'ala has always created in the earth or allowed from the earth that uh, uh, wars and sickness and plagues and famines always exist on the earth so that you know what the contrast. You can see the contrast of your nama with their nama. Akhbarana Abu Bakr ibn Abil Haytham at Turabi. Okay, and he lists an, uh, a number of asaneed. An Abdullah ibn al-Ala, an al-Dahaq, an al-Ash'ari, qala sami'atu Aba Huraira yaqul, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna awwala ma yus'alu al-abd yawm al-qiyamati min al-na'imi an yuqal Alam nusaha jismak. Didn't we make your body sound? When nurwiki nurwik alma min alma al barad and give you cold water so that your your tool is working. Why didn't you travel from point A to point B? Didn't does your your car work? Does the gas work? Does the brake work? Do you have gasoline? Then why don't you why don't you travel from point A to point B? Does it make a difference now what you're driving? If your body works, khalas, why aren't you doing anything? He gives in a lot of their long senad to a hadith of Abi Huraira. خَرَجَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ فِي سَاعَةٍ لَا يَخْرُجُ فِيهَا He went out in an hour, he never goes out in. وَلَا يَلْقَاهُ فِيهَا أَحَدٍ People were not used to seeing him outside that house. But Abu Bakr was there. And he says, and the Prophet وسلم, said, يَا أَبَا بَكْرُ مَا جَاءَ بِكْ What brings you out at this hour? He said, I came out to see the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. And to look at his face and to say salam to him. Falam yalbath and ja'a Umar. He didn't wait too long until, lo and behold, Sayyidina Umar comes out. He said, Oh, Umar, what, why do you come out at this hour? He says, Hunger, O Messenger of Allah. Okay? Late in the night, Messenger وسلم, said, And I also have hunger. Fantalaku ila manzil abil haytham. So they went to a man named Abu Haytham who was accustomed to having people at this hour. Okay? And he was he had a lot of uh nakhl. Okay? Uh he had a lot of um uh, uh palm trees and he had a lot of uh animals. So animals produce milk, right? Walam yakun lahu khadam, but he didn't have servants. So no one was there. So he went to the farm, no servants were there. فَلَمْ يَجِدُوا Alright, so, but they saw his wife. They said, where's our companion? Where is this man? Okay, his, his man, his name is, um, we said, uh, Abu Al-Haytham. Where is Abu Al-Haytham? She said, in طَلَقْ لِيَسْتَعْذِبْ لَنَا الْمَاءِ He went to go get water. فَلَمْ يَلْبَثُوا أَنْ جَاءَ الْهَيْثَمْ They waited a little bit, 
Haytham comes in with uh, water, and they and he placed it down. And immediately he went straight to the Prophet Then he took them all to the garden. And he put out a mat on which he placed the food. Okay. And he went to the trees and he bought uh, branches full of fruits. Then he put it down. Palm, uh, dates. And the Prophet ﷺ said, would, would you get us this or that? He said, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, for you to choose right, from it. Uh, it. He said, I want you to choose. So he brought them what uh, they wanted and they ate from it and they drank from the water. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, this few dates and cool water is what we will be asked about on the day of judgment. Okay? Shade from uh uh cool shade. Rutab tayyib. Alright. Dates. Rutab is a is a phase of the date. It's the early phase of the date. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. I'm not I'm not uh strong on my date science. I should probably get there. But Good dates and cool water. Abu Haytham went to make food. Now, by the way, I had said, and he, they, they earlier mentioned an hour that the Prophet was not used to going out. I am actually think that it's the height of the day, not the middle uh, of the night. Okay. The height of the day, I think. Uh, and, the pro- and then he went and he slaughtered for them. Okay? And he brought, and he f- cooked the food. And, he, and they ate the food. So imagine that. That's like an hour process. Yeah. You slaughter an animal, skin the animal, take the guts out, cut the animal up. It's a big deal. What a headache. We do it on Eid and we're like, how long is this taking, right? <laughs> you go to the farm on Eid and you watch these guys. By the way, this, these guys, there was this group from Ghana. They were so good at it. The guy did it with a kitchen knife. He slaughtered uh, a goat or a sheep. I think it was a sheep. It was a sheep. He slaughtered it with a, with a bigger knife. Then they hung the sheep up upside down and then all the blood drains and sometimes they dig a hole that the blood would drain there. Mm. But the le- after the slaughter on the ground there's a hole to collect the blood. After the main blood is out then they hang it upside down for the other blood to come out, to come down. And then literally he took a kitchen knife, steak knife. And like a, he must have done this dozens of times. He cuts at one level of the skin Right? And then psh, just fold it right Peels down. It off. All right? You ever get uh, from the laundromat and there's a piece of plastic covering your garment? <laughs> just rip it right? That's how he ripped the skin. He ripped it in such a way that it could be used as a rug. Right? Of course, you're going to have to cut again around the head. Right? And so you can use it as a skin. He cut it that way. And then I saw him going about cutting up this piece of this animal. First thing, took out the organs. Certain organs, you want them. And certain certain ones you don't, right? So he cuts open this part of the animal and he takes out the organs. I'm telling you, the intestine, you think the intestines is gross? Glistening. The intestines. And then there was a Moroccan woman. All right, you want that? Give me that, right? <laughs> he said, all right, it's yours. Yeah. Right? And she she went, took these, these intestines and then she sat. Now I'm watching her now. She cuts the intestines, okay, in certain parts. Then she takes all those parts, each part maybe this long, and she empties the intestine, right? Now, don't think that some nasty, gross-smelling stuff came out. No. The najasa, the defecation, and the urine of, like, goats and sheep, it's not that bad, and it's not nejas. It's not even nejas, right? It's just, like, hay, right? Like, mashed up. It doesn't even smell that bad, right? So the intestines of meat eaters is what smells bad, right? Like, dog and cat intest- uh, defecation is far worse, because they... They have the, their body is different. So she sits there and she empties out the intestines like a hose, right? And I'm telling you, the intestines are glistening. This was amazing. She then takes a hose, puts it inside the intestine, turns the hose on, and each intestine that she got would get completely washed out yeah. with the hose water. What was left was like a nice crisp package, basically. Yeah. 
and you could use that for sausages, right? right? And what the Egyptians do is they'll take uh, that piece, they'll stuff it with meat and rice, right? So my favorite Egyptian dishes. Yeah, but here's the key. You leave some at the edges and you tie big knots, knot after knot after knot, and they have two thick knots of intestine uh-huh. knotted up. Then you deep fry that and that those edges are the best, yes. right? <laughs> those, <laughs> you want those edges. But when I go to my family, I just go around eating the edges. Right? <laughs> I just eat the edges. You guys eat the middle stuff. But that's the original hot dog, yeah. right? Yeah. So this guy did it with such precision. He really did it in maybe like 20 minutes. And then now you have to lay, now you have the animal hollow on the inside. Mm-hmm. And now you take the bigger knife now, the bigger knife. And that's when you start chopping it up. So the idea that the slaughter can be done under an hour is possible, uh. right? It's possible to slaughter from start to finish. That animal was walking. Now it's, 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 it's been slaughtered, chopped up, and it's cooked. It could take an hour, right? Which is not a terribly amount, terrible amount of time. And then uh, you, they usually, their spicing is so basic, salt. Yeah. That's it, salt, right? And maybe some olive oil. And when's that fresh? You don't even need that much. And when it's that when it's fresh, it has yeah. its own taste to it. Yeah, it yeah. That's what the old the old days, they don't know the nama that they had. Like <laughs> all their food is fresh. Like you lived on a farm and you wish technology would come around, right? You don't know technology is gonna displace this wonderful thing that you're eating. Yeah. Like the apples were always good. There's no such thing as like a bad apple, right? Uh, Everything is beautiful, right? Well, I'm sure there were some what they call misfits, things that didn't grow perfectly. Anyway, so uh, Back to this hadith, okay, um, uh, that the Prophet wasallam said, this is the na'im. So he slaughtered the animal. And the Prophet wasallam said, don't you have a servant? Like, you have a huge farm. No, no employees? قَالَ لَا Messenger wasallam, he says, if we bring you someone, right, we'll give it to you. If we get anything, help, we'll give you help. Then he bought, okay. Now the Arabs, they consider the best part of the meal the head. Because the meat is softest inside the face and the mm-hmm. head. Because it doesn't move. All the other meat moves. He said, pick one of them. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I mis- mistook it. Um, not head of an animal. So he's talking later now. Not right. Not in. Not in. We're not in this sitting right now. Prisoners. Two prisoners of war were brought. And the Prophet said, "Him, you choose." I said, "Choose one to be your servant." Mm. Sebi, meaning prisoner. So the pro- the man said, "Oh, Mazar, you choose for me." So the Prophet said, "Said in a mustashar mut if you're asking advice for someone, that's a trust. You have to give them the right advice. You can't betray them. Okay. He said, take this prisoner of war because he prays. He prays. Yeah. Right? So maybe the prisoner of war became Muslim. Okay? Um, Be good to him. Okay? He went and told his wife, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, has given us this servant, slave. His wife said, the Prophet ﷺ said, be good to him. She said, the greatest goodness is to free him. Otherwise, you haven't fulfilled the Prophet's saying, be good to him. Okay? All right. He said, you're free. You're free. Because the Prophet said, be good to him. This yeah. is the best goodness. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى لَمْ يَبْعَثْ نَبِيًّا وَلَا خَلِيفَةً إِلَّا وَلَهُ بِطَانَتَانِ بِطَانَ تَأْمُرُهُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَاهُ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ okay. He said no, no prophet or khalifa has been given with except two sides. One side he commands right and forbids wrong. وَبِطَانَ لَا تَأْلُوهُ إِلَّا خَبَالًا وَمَنْ يُوقَ بِطَانَةِ السُّوءِ فَقَدْ وُقِيَ right. And whoever and another batana I don't want to translate it incorrectly, but he says, whoever avoids evil will be protected from all harm. 
Okay, so that's an interesting hadith of Abu Haytham and his food, his slaughtering, and receiving slaves as prisoner of war. Okay, how are we doing on time? Ryan, what's what, what status? What's Four our status? Hour 16, All right, um, we're almost. We only have two more narrations. What are or where we at? عن ابن عباس قال النعيم صحة الأبدان والأسماء والأبصار Your bodies, your limbs are healthy Your eyes and your, hear, your hearing and your seeing is healthy يسأل الله العبيد يسأل الله العبيد فيما استعملوها Allah asks What did you do with it? Okay Allah says And do not take a stance ولا تقف Don't take a position ما ليس لك به علم or what you don't know about. Okay? You're hearing, you're seeing, and your heart, you will all be asked about this. This is also the, our verse of epistemology. Okay? Al yeah. ilm here means certainty. So, what can I be certain about? Transmitted knowledge, okay? Demonstrable knowledge, and rational knowledge. Okay? The fu'ad here being the, the Arabs always mix between the heart and the intellect as one. Okay? So, Certainty can be attained only by transmission, observation, slash demonstration, and reason. Okay? And the Qur'an, of course, comes by transmission. Belief in Allah is by reason. So, in the Ash'ari Aqidah, belief in a, in a creator is by aqid. He doesn't need transmission. Oh. Negation of paganism, it's by aqid. It doesn't need a transmission. So you see a Hindu worshipping a, 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 a god... Okay, and say, oh, he never received a transmission. His never receiving transmission only frees him from punishment, but it does not free him from stupidity of paganism. Because you know this thing, you made it, right? You fashioned it. Someone fashioned it somewhere. I went to 99 cent store and saw gods, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, the, a North Brunswick 99 cent store, I went to take a kerosene one time, uh, uh, whatever, lighter fluid, at the 99 cent store. I saw a god, right? Elephant, woman with arms. I'm like, subhanAllah, Ali. If I worshipped an idol, I would never make it out of plastic and sell it at a 99 cent store, right? <laughs> Tell me, if you were at a 99 cent store and you saw Skittles, right? Gum, <laughs> Quran, wouldn't that be an issue, right? Wait, 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 what are you doing, right? Cheaply made Quran. That's what I saw. It's the Skittles, lollipops. I like a cheapo plastic idol, right? Of the elephant. Like, even if you took this as a god, that's not the place for a god. Yeah. A cheapo 99 cent god, right? It's for the smaller wishes in life. It's for the small wishes. It's a, <laughs> pray for Skittles. <laughs> right? So, I mean, whatever they believe about it, symbolism, doesn't matter. Symbolism or not, right? You still have even, to treat that. Even symbols, right? Yeah, like uh, our symbols. We would treat that with something. Mm -hmm. Of of Allah. We, yeah. like, it's honored it's yeah. honored yeah. and we only the only reason that you will have any semblance of respect for a false symbol is so that you don't get a reaction not in itself mm -hmm. because the Quran gives us the illa okay that we don't curse their gods and they don't turn around and curse Allah the cursing the God at that point is the right thing to do because it's a source of misguidance for people. Mm. Cursing Allah will get you punished. So we don't respect idols in and of itself. So if, if I'm sitting here and there's an idol, right? And there's no Hindu around that I would be offending to the point that he would insult Allah. Then we would just put it in the recycling bin, right? Yeah. That's it. There's not the respect for it in that regard. So... Um, but there is respect for the environment, which is why we recycle. <laughs> but we recycle, <laughs> so we respect, <laughs> respect the environment. So certain things do not need transmission, certain things do need transmission. But again, we say that if they haven't received the transmission about the hellfire, they're guilty of paganism, but they won't be punished because um, there's no punishment if they have not received the message. That's the difference between us and the Maturidiyah. The Maturidi say you're guilty uh, because you don't need an intellect to know that idolatry is wrong. It's false. We say, you're right about that, but they're not morally guilty because there's, they haven't been threatened by a fire. Right? They don't know that there's a threat mm -hmm. of punishment. That belief in hellfire is purely transmitted. It's not something you discern by your intellect. Mm -hmm. Falsehood of idols is discerned by the intellect. Uh, wrapping up, 
excuse me, قال عكرمة عن الصحة والفراغ. He also mentioned spare time. That's huge. Spare time is massive. Jubair, Saeed ibn Jubair also said, it's spare time, health, and money. Well, these three things, if you have these three things, okay, um, you're going to be asked about it because you, if you have these three things, you can only do good or bad. You can only, if you do something bad, waste it, which is bad, or do something good. Okay. Another hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam: "Ni'matan maghbunun fihi ma kathirun min al nasi al sihat wal faragh." Two blessings that many, many, many people are um, uh, robbed of: free time and health. Okay. And lastly, قال الحسين بن الفضل: "تخفيف الشرائع وتيسير القرآن" is also one of the other blessings that we have: is that Allah Taala has made the Sharia. Easy, and he's made the uh, 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 e e easier than the Sharia of Christians and Jews. No. And it is um, uh, the Quran has been made easy to recite. Okay. All right. With that, let us stop here, and let us talk about uh, Safina Society, uh, Patreon.com backslash Safina Society. All right. Your your involvement in this podcast, no matter where you are, is through. Patreon.com backslash Safina Society, which is where you will, inshallah ta'ala, uh, you can support this podcast and get some of the hasanats and the reward of everything that gets done here. Okay. Secondly, Mecca Books is now releasing an amazing work, right, called Exemplars of Our Time about as salihin Ubad, Ulama, Zuhad of Our Time, okay, that, that lived. In this century. And why is that important? Of course we know the purest of people are those of the past. But the people that you benefit most from, mm -hmm. the most influential people are you, the people who share your tribulations, share your life and times. So we have now these pictures. Look at these pictures, okay, of these shuyukh. That's Habib Ahmed Mashul Haddad at the bottom. There is one of the shuyukh. Go back to that other picture, Rai. All right. Um, look, there's a sheikh on the top right with the white beard. If I'm not mistaken, he's one of the first people to bring Islam to England. One of the first shiyukh to bring Islam to England. Of course, there on the left of him is Murabit al-Hajj, that color picture with he's covering his eyes. That is, a, each one of these is a booklet. Mm -hmm. It's a picture book about that sheikh. Below him with the turban, Habib Ahmed Mashul Haddad. Uh, to his right of Habib Ahmed Mashul Haddad is one of the ulama of East Africa who lived in Jeddah. All the way to the left is a biography of a woman. Right, do you have the names? Fatima al Yashrutiya. Okay. And then above him is that the Sheikh um, uh, from East Africa is um, Sayyid Omar. Omar. Okay, he lived in Jeddah. Next picture. There you have Habib Ahmed Mashur Haddad who was amazingly brought into Islam over 130,000 Ugandans. And if you're wondering, oh, that's sort of ridiculous. It's not ridiculous because he brought the tribal leaders. Okay, And the tri once the tribal leader comes in, that tribal leader may represent 20,000. Yeah. May represent 30,000. So he brought in tribal leaders. They brought in the rest of their tribes. Okay. Next picture. This is Fatima al Yashruti. I'm looking forward to reading about her biography. Mm. And, and I'll be doing the interviews with the authors. All right, you can get this at meccabooks.com. Next picture. Does it say a name here? Sheikh? No, doesn't have a name. But he is one of the, if I'm not mistaken, because I read his biography one time. He's the one who brought Islam, one of the first people to bring Islam to England. Okay, one of the first people to bring Islam to England. Amazing. Uh, history. We have a history now in the West. Like before in the Ottoman times, yeah. it would have been unthinkable, right? They would think you're all subversives. All right, next, that is, a, that's what the book looks on the inside, looks like on the inside. Biographies of these these people and these shuyukh, where uh, you have here Sayyid Omar. Abdullah uh, 
Okay, click the next picture. I think that would be Salah al Jafari next. This is Muhammad ibn al Habib, whose qasidas we recite all the time. Then you have Habib al Mashur al Haddad sitting like a king, right? Although he never treated himself like a king, he always sat down, uh, you know, like everybody else. But he was very humble. Mm. And the biographies, Dr. Mustafa al Badawi probably wrote Habib al Mashur Haddad's one. Uh, Hamza Yusuf probably, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf probably wrote Murabat al Hajj's one. Um, and then you have some others, Samir Dajani, Karim Laham, Shams Freelander, Michael Sujik. Okay, Peter Sanders is the photographer. Okay, it's an amazing book. You can get uh, these volumes, they're nine volumes in total. I'm assuming, and there's only 500 copies, okay, yeah, yeah. between. In the uh, available in the U.S., they're going to get more. And also, uh, it looks here that um, uh, it, it appears here that they're sold as one, or are they sold individually? It's, it's like it's sold together. Individually. 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 They, they already have the Murabat al Hajj one. It's being sold already. Okay, so that's a picture of Murabat al Hajj. Great example of someone who had istiqama, which is basically uprightness and consistency. And it said at the end of his life, he was still teaching the kids and the adults. He was he he was the sheikh of the shiuch there, even so much so that he is the honorary chairman. He was before his passing. May Allah give him janat al without hisab. He was the honorary chair of the le- of the fatwa council of Mauritania itself. That's how much the scholars respected him. But he was nonetheless teaching the kids while some of his graduates, students are muftis. Now, Instagram, you can't see all the pictures, but you do see the quality of the book that we're looking at. Next. This is, uh, and that's it. All right. So uh, those are all of our uh, pictures of the exemplars, which you can buy with, by the way, coupon code Safina. Put in a coupon code. And you will get a discount. Coupon code Safina. They'll know that you got it from here. So that, inshallah ta'ala, you can um, benefit. All right. Prince Matthew Gamer says, I have to go to sleep now. All right. We will also wrap up. Let's go uh, to our comments and our questions. All right. Ryan, if you could change the title to just to Cathar. Because we didn't really do uh, the, the surah today. Okay. So, you head off? You're going to work? Yeah. Right. No, like long lunch break is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. Let's we'll see what we got here. El Saracino, a little Andalusian treat for everyone. The word bodega comes from the Arabic baqala. Baqala is where you get like um, the herbs and stuff, right? Herbs and things like that. Okay. Maham says, we studied this test when studying free will and predestination. Uh, University of Edinburgh has a whole course on this. Saracino. By the way, you know what I advised some of your trip mates? Last five days, go to Morocco. Yeah. So if you go to Morocco the last five days and we have no time in Spain. Yeah. There's nothing to see in Spain. Waste of time. Yeah. The Mosque of Cordoba, it's a museum. You go to Morocco, though, you'll be an Islamic country. You'll have many different things going around Masajid. I have contacts there. Take you to all the Masajid. Take you to the, the gatherings they have there. Meet the Shiuch there. Right? And probably pay half the cost. Okay, so we don't have Saracino. Okay. All right, Saracino has a question. Uh, AI question is very simple. It's not sentient or conscience. Or uh, Jin can manipulate electronics. The guy at Google is talking to Shayateen, who had infiltrated the software because the Shayateen wants to show confusion and doubt. I mean, it, it, maybe it could be, but also it's just spitting out what it's learned, right? What you put in and it spit it out. Is that we just put in highly detailed intonations, language, etc. What does Orf 
play in fiqh. Urf is customs. Customs of whom? Customs of the Satanists? Customs of the pious, practicing, praying Muslims. In a case where there's no Quran, there's no hadith, we can't get a fatwa from a scholar, okay? There's no statement on a matter, we go by Urf. Like what, for example? Um, is a clothes, a lot of clothes is wearing certain clothes, makru or halal, right? Uh, we would go by urf on that. Okay. Can we please get the NBF series on Spotify, says Neba. Yes, Neba, you are now, I'm going to ask right now, I'm going to ask right now, our person getting engaged, like a, uh, congratulations on your engagement. Sort of fake congratulations because I really want to ask her if she's going to do her job. <laughs> Good. Um, I assume you will be too busy, busy to upload NBF to SoundCloud. Let me know. You know, let me know is one of those uh, um, there's a funny thing about corporate corporates corporates um, let's have a discussion on this so we can get clarity right or so we can align our interests it's like what you really meant was what the heck are you doing you're ruining everything right there's, there's, <laughs> a, there's a this woman online that yeah. basically she does um like, you know, the short videos that are supposed to be funny about, like, what, how to say some, like, how to say a certain thing that you actually mean, but how do you say it in a corporate? Yeah, like, exactly. That's what it right? is. Like, oh, like, for example, how do you say this is not my job, you should take it. Yeah. Out. And then it's like, like, they'll talk I don't want to step on your toes, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, how do you, so wait, so, like, so, or don't, you know, try to figure out the solution before you ask me. Exactly. You know, like that, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, how about, um, are we, are there any challenges is really like, what's your problem? Why can't you do your job? Right? Yeah. Can you figure this out? Yeah. All right. What else we got here? I'm not here. 9 11 says, when Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam asks Allah on how he brings life to death, yes, he wants to elevate from ilm al yaqeen to ayn al yaqeen. He wants to see it for himself. Number question two What is the ruling on the four methods of covering the head during salah? I don't know about the four, but in the Madiki Madhab, it's not something necessarily written in the Fada'il. They don't really put that in the list. I've never seen it listed on the Fada'il in the books that I've studied. Okay. I have a uh, question about that. The other question yes. about Prophet Ibrahim. Um, th- th- this, it's, b- it's been explained to me years ago that one of the things that made the Prophet Sallallahu stand out mm-hmm. uh, above all the other NBA. Yes. Which is what? In addition to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated him. Above. Yes, one of the khasais of the but Prophet. That, but that he, let's say, didn't ask for proof of things. Kind of just... Ah, uh, subhanAllah. Right? One that of the... He, that, that's you know, that's that Ibrahim, true. Prophet Ibrahim or, or Prophet Musa, for example, uh, asked to see... Yes, to Allah see... Uh, uh, yes, and Le- so like the, 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 the Prophet sallam, that made him, gave him a... a, a, a uh, a higher up, a, a leg up yeah. on, on the other NBA is that he, whatever he received, he took it as is, didn't say, prove it to me. That's true. You know, and Or he never asked for a demonstration. Right. That is true. Not only that, in many cases, what one prophet asked for and did not receive, the prophet was given without asking, mm-hmm. such as the vision of Allah subhanahu right. wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Musa asked for it, and but did not receive it. Mm-hmm. The Prophet did not ask for it and received it. Mm-hmm. So that, on top of that too, he received what they didn't receive right. without asking for what they had asked for. Yeah. That's true. That's a good point. I think that's in the Qadi Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was... Uh, I, yeah. I'd heard an expression like that before. I wasn't sure if it was, yeah. if it was sound explanation yeah. or not. Uh, Prince Matthew says, wait, if they reject an explicit verse that is a mubtada, wouldn't that be kufr? If it's explicit and widespread, then it's kufr. If it's merely explicit, then it's innovation. Uh, Muslima says, does the label innovator also include those who only follow innovators or who are born in the family of innovators? The common people may be treated with some leniency by Allah on the Day of Judgment, and Allah knows best. The common people of the innovators. Right. Right? They may be. 
their scholars may be treated differently from their common folk. Dr. Sherman, Question. No huh? It is mutawatir in its transmission, but not all of the Qur'an is... Not, not, uh, for example, Surat Sad exists, right? It's transmitted by mutawatir, yeah. but it's not necessarily known to every Muslim by necessity. So if you, ask a child, if you ask a 10-year-old child or a regular common Muslim, is there a Surah called Sad? He wouldn't know, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a, that's the difference. What's the difference between Shurafa and Ahl al Bayt? There's no difference. Shurafa are Ahl al Bayt, but sometimes they consider a Sharif to be Hassani lineage and Sayyid to be Husseini lineage. Sometimes they use that terminology. A Sharif, Al Hassani, was Sayyid Al Husseini. Wallahu alam, it's just like Arf in speech. All right, uh, Maliki Click. Traces his family back to 610 from the Nordics. Right? Where is he from? He was, he was Norwegian. He's a Norwegian guy? So he traces his lineage back to the Vikings. Yeah. Which means no messing around. <laughs> yeah. What exactly, as Hamza Hussein, about the Quran is uncreated? It's the itself, everything. Quran is uncreated. Yesterday, yeah. yesterday in class, Sheikh Murad made a good diagram where it said, Kalam, Lafdi, and Nafsi. Nafsi. Yeah. Uncreated, or, un, yeah, uncreated, no sound, no language. Correct. No, no letters. Yeah. Lafdi, created sound. Correct. So what is created? And, and uh, attribute. On us. Exactly. Yeah. What is created of the Quran? We know that the Arabic language is a creation. Right, the letters are creations, so that element of things, right, uh, is what they would term al Quran al Lafti, how the Quran is recited, how the Quran is spoken, how the Quran is put into words, has a beginning and an end, has parts to it, but as for the essence of the Quran, it is an uncreated meaning that has no beginning, no end, and we say about the Quran, what is between the two binds of the Mus'haf is the word of Allah. And we say about the word of Allah, even though we say that Arabic is created, okay, that there is no cre human being, no creation that uh, has a role in the compilation of in the composition of the Quran. <laughs> Meaning, no created being, no thing had any role in the comp composition of the Quran, mm -hmm. construction. Of the Quran. Okay. Handal al-Sheikh says, do you have any advice for those living by themselves? Oh, by the way, now back to Ryan's about the mutawatir, right? The contradiction, direct contradiction of the Qur'an is kufr, by the way. Ignorance of it would be different, right? But direct contradiction of the Qur'an because the entirety of the Qur'an is mutawatir. Do you have any advice for those living by themselves, age 2022, who have opportunities to commit zina and are extremely attempted to do so hookup culture is embedded and there is no masjid near the area so alhamdulillah if you are 20 to 22 if you're able to work and 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 provide for yourself why don't you move to an area that has more support maybe your parents won't let you well what if you got a job somewhere else so mom i got a job offer in this in the area where there are there's a support system you marry, I mean, yes, there are apps, and I have seen regular Muslims, good Muslims, use some of these apps to get married. I'm not going to totally deny the app. But it's not definitely not the ideal way, right? So the way is that to be around a culture of Muslims, a group of Muslims. And you could do that and use some of these apps that's, as long as it's in a halal and wholesome way, not some kind of like a um, uh, pickup type of way or hookup culture what he said All right so but I think the sohbah is the most important thing for us as Muslims I think these apps are typically useful for people who are the apps like are typically person. made for people who live at a distance or, yeah you're right and, and some people by the way their family moved a lot so they really have no home right 
right? They have no home city that they consider their city. What's going on with Instagram today? Uh, the Instagrammers are here. I saw books, says Abby, of family names that traces back my lineage to Ayub al-Ansari. That's wonderful. Nice. Just visited him. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is it possible for your books to be made available online? Oh, because the shipping is too much. Well, send us a message. We'll dis discount you the shipping. Inshallah. Yusuf sends info at safinasida.org. The purpose of these books is for people to have them, mm -hmm. right? So we'll cut out the shipping for you. We'll pay the shipping ourselves. Abdul Hadi says, Do we believe that the Prophet وسلم, prays in his grave? Allahu Adam, but we know that he's living a life that suits his majesty, his, 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 his rank. Mm -hmm. Okay? Suits his rank. It's a, and it's a greater life than this life because Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى And being in the Barzakh is part of the Akhirah. Yeah. Pupu says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What is the best way to get something lofty from Allah? It is to pray with desperation in the middle of the night regularly, constantly. Okay. Abi says, why is Texas becoming a place of hijrah? The land is, is vast. The state does not take money from you. It, there's no income tax. There's no state income tax. The property is cheap. And there are less liberals. People <laughs> like that, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it is a place where they, their tax structure attracts people. You can buy homes. The size of that home would probably be double than what you buy here. Mm -hmm. The land you'd get in that home. When I flew over... Uh, places like in Florida and I flew over Houston you just look down and you see blue dots everyone has a swimming pool everyone has an in-ground swimming pool it's like a thing there yeah. it's so hot right? you could probably use it probably maybe six months a year here you use it what three or four months a year making istikhara for a time sensitive situation how do I make the decision istishara don't forget there's istikhara and there's istishara which is asking people for advice okay do we believe prophets are sinless? Yes. Muzammil says, What do you do with th thoughts that creep in my mind saying Allah will not give you such and such because you don't have the ability to handle that thing. And you become ghafil when you get them. Prove yourself to be grateful. Start proving yourself to be a grateful servant. And remove these thoughts. These thoughts are from your nafs or from shaitan. Where do you recommend going as a woman in Morocco? I, want to, I can't recommend you go somewhere by yourself to some of these countries, even the Islamic ones. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend any Muslim go by herself, to be honest with you. Is it good? Is it enough to say a thousand sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Yes. Are atheist mushriks? All kuffar is one category. Ahl kitab is an exception within the category. After that, everything is the same. We call that all mushrik. Even the atheist. Because he still is believing in something. It's just not a formalized idol. Mm -hmm. okay. And some say that they're worse. Because they've taken their nafs as an idol. That's the worst. Mm -hmm. He does have a God. His whim is his God. And that's the worst of all. At least the, the mushrik who has a pagan, who has another God, he's respecting something outside of himself. Right? But the atheist has taken his whim as a God. Did Omar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, did he do a sikhara for over a month on whether or not he should collect the hadith in a book? I can't remember if that's a hadith or not, that happened or not. What's the ruling on cigars, considering they're not inhaled? Cigars not inhaled? That's not true. It's used as a stimulant. No, it is inhaled. Definitely inhaled. Has to be. How does it burn then? Right? <laughs> huh? What's that? People don't, people don't put the smoke into their lungs. What do they do? And then they, I didn't know that. Well, you, you can't. I never knew that. Yeah. I think most people no, don't, but you can. Like yeah. Like Michael Jordan when he's got a yeah. cigar all the time. <laughs> but you, you I don't know you the. the uh, same for uh, for hookah too, people, do, people you can either. They don't inhale it, or, but how does it come can. out of their nose if you they don't inhale, inhale it? it? You can inhale. You, it. A lot of people say, "Oh, I don't." In the, it's fine because I don't. The Ahnaf have a hesitation on calling it 
haram, they say makruh, I think tahrimi, which means that we don't have a nas, but our ijtihad says it's haram. But we don't say the word haram. I believe that that's the Hanafi position. The Maliki position is it, kulluhu haram. All go, of it's haram. Imagine you go to the masjid and then the imam's got like a big cigarette. Yeah. I mean, if it's only makruh, <laughs> right, then we shouldn't be upset. Right? Uh, under the bass beat says, can I ask an off-topic question? My father is a retired consultant pediatrician, born Muslim, but agnostic in his beliefs and feels very disturbed as a pediatrician that the Prophet ﷺ married Sayyidah Aisha. Why would he be disturbed by that? She was capable of handling everything, right? If Wait, he's agnostic. So he sort of doesn't wa- believe in God. Why does he believe in that transmission? Why does he believe in that fact? Why does he treat that as a fact, that the Prophet married Sayyidah Aisha at age nine. No, all he can believe in is that some people say the Prophet married Aisha at nine. If you're agnostic about things, be agnostic properly. So be a good, be a prop, consistent agnostic. Not, okay, oh no, that's not true that he's a, he's a prophet, but what's narrated about his marriage is true. How? So say, I'm troubled by what some Muslims say. And then what difference does it make what Muslims say? Right? So I would say, Pops, you're an inconsistent agnostic. If you truly don't know and don't believe that revelation came to the Prophet wasallam, that is something far more widely transmitted than the mere transmission of his wife's age. Okay? So you should not necess- you should be a skeptic about the transmission itself. Right? Mm-hmm. There we go. Sophia Al Ahyan says could you explain the fiqh of divorce as most people don't know how people know how to get married but no idea how to divorce oh my goodness how true is this is that people don't know how to do divorce when you divorce number one the woman must be on a state of tahara uh, sorry not tahara there's a difference tahara is wudu tahara is she is not on hide the opposite of hide is called tahara you're, it is haram to divorce a woman on hayd, and if you do, you have to take her back, wait until she's out of hayd, and then divorce her if you want, and now it counts as a second divorce. So it counts against you, and you have to take it back. Take her back. Revoke the divorce. Okay? Then you utter talaq one time. You don't repeat it. You don't say it more than once, because it will count against you. Why? Ijma'a sahaba Why is it that saying divorce three times Anti talaq, anti talaq, anti talaq Actually counts as a three times divorce You cannot take her back Nor remarry her unless she marries another man Consummates that marriage Then gets a divorce from that man Why? Because Sayyidina Umar issued the fatwa for it Well, why do wife have to follow one sahabi? Because the sahaba agreed to the fatwa No one disagreed to the fatwa So that's ijma'a sahaba If the sahaba have an ijma'a about something It's law Forever. Okay, that is the policy in all four madhabs, and the only one who went against that was Ibn Taymiyyah. Okay, so if you are following that, you're following the fatwa of Ibn Taymiyyah only. Okay, That's so uh, th- do not say it three times. Some people think they have to say it three times. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so I know this is kind of in jest, but yeah. Egyptians very commonly say, and then they swear by something. Is now, it, does that carry any weight? It counts. It does. If you they say it, I mean, they say it all the time. It, the Prophet <laughs> made another rule. They're all divorced. <laughs> all those kids zina. <laughs> if you say divorce in jest, it counts. The Prophet said three things are they're joking is is serious. Is is law. They're joking is law. Okay? It's jad, which means it's serious. Hazluhunna jad. The joking in this matter is taken seriously, meaning it's applicable as law. Which means the first one is a marriage, second is divorce, third is freeing a slave. You cannot marry someone in a play. That's a real marriage. There's no joking in it, right? So if a man says, by Allah, I'm going to divorce my wife with three time, three time divorce if you don't eat this egg. If I don't eat the egg, he's divorced. And I don't have no sin if I don't want to eat the egg, Right? I'm not responsible for your divorce. So, these people who say this and take it like as a joke, and it's happening all the time, okay, and they say it all the time, they've probably been divorced by now. 
All these marriages messed up. Does it count even if they don't know that that's a rule? It counts even if he doesn't know it's a rule. Because you entered into marriage willingly. So now for ignorance doesn't count for, for you. When you enter into something willingly, ignorance doesn't count. Oh, I went into the restaurant business. I never knew I could not sell khanzir. I, I know I can't eat it. And how many people do that? Yeah, a lot. They'll sell the haram. They say, we just don't eat it. Okay? But you willingly went into business. You studied the laws or the policies or the township, how to sign up for a business. But you didn't study Allah's law? You're guilty. Do you know it does a headache to set up a business account to pay the taxes? To pay the lease. You negotiated the lease. You asked around, is the lease of this place, this storefront, fair? Is this a fair price? So you have knowledge. You asked around the product. You asked how the customers are doing. You asked how to market the business. You did all that. As a Muslim, knowingly, you're a Muslim. Okay? But you didn't ask Allah's law. You're guilty. You willingly got married. So you know how to pay a dowry, how to get an apartment, how to do everything uh, that a husband needs to do but you never studied Allah's law you're guilty so there's no excuse of jihad is not an excuse believe it or not very very sad situation very sad situation I'm telling so many people come to me say so I divorced my wife in the sunnah which is anti-talik 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 oh my goodness you were not paying attention at Jum'ah <laughs> right that is, it's the opposite. You're not supposed to say that or else it's a three times divorce. <laughs> Ali Batali says, Ali Batali, can you tell us about the 48 laws of karma? Is, uh, I have to look into that. Is that like a new age thing? 48 laws of what? Karma. Um, 48, okay, so correction for the Hanafi, makruh tahrimi, it is haram, but they don't want to say the word haram. It's haram by H jihad, if I'm if I'm correct. All right. If I've understood Hazi ninety nine said correct. So does it make it sinful then? Sinful. Yeah. Nabila XHY says, Would you be able to explain the seven ahruf? Seven ahruf is very simple. It's not seven, it's seven there meaning just many. It is all of the dialects of the Arabs. Very simple. Quran came in the dialects of Quraysh. All the Arabs tribes speak different dialects. Mm -hmm. Came in the language of Quraysh, Prophet. Then asked Allah Ta'ala to bring it in the other languages when he saw them hesitating. Like if a, if a New Yorker goes to California, is he going to get far in convincing people to do stuff? No. He's got to speak. In the, in the, if a New Yorker went to Texas, mm -hmm. right? they hate New Yorkers, right? Mm -hmm. The rivalry. So likewise, people had rivalry with Quraysh, right? So the dialect of Quraysh is set easily with them. So Allah, the Prophet asked Allah for the Qur'an to be revealed in the other dialects. And then it was revealed in this one dialect, in the second dialect, then all the dialects. So whenever the Prophet recited the Qur'an to a tribe, he recited it with their dialect exactly. And he spoke to them, he was inspired to speak to them with a, precisely their dialect. Nowadays okay. when they recite in various recitations, are you allowed to mix the various yeah. dialects? It, it wouldn't invalidate your salah. If you wrote, recited one verse in Hafs, one verse, verse in Wadsh, yeah. but it's not the way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's fine if you did. You know that, I didn't realize this, that um, I gave a talk in San Jose, California one time. Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamid Adi was there out of just to respect my being a guest there. And, I, and then when it was question time, they're all staring at me, right? Like afraid. So I was like, I guess the talk wasn't good because they're not engaged, right? I mean, no one was leaving. No one's engaged. So either I was crystal clear about everything or I didn't bring up an engaging issue. Yeah. So I said to Sheikh Abdullah after, what was up with, what's up with the, the audience here? He said, no, no, I think you came over, you came out and that the way that you guys talk on the East Coast is like really strong. I was going to say, they were probably intimidated yeah. by it. It's like really definitive. Everything's definitive and things are exaggerated, right? Like say like something is quite nice. No, you say the best, right? Right? When like the British would be like quite nice, right? Yeah. Right? We would just be like, oh the best, right? Everything is with a bold marker, right? <laughs> so um they're pretty upset. Uh I mean pretty like taken aback. He yeah. said that's my interpretation of things. <laughs> All right, Abby says, um or Nabila says the Ahruf, so that's that's the summary of the Ahruf, that's all it is. Now some of them were preserved and some weren't. Mm -hmm. When the Quraysh wrote the spelling, when the Sayyidina Uthman had the Qur'an written down with the spelling of Quraysh, 
that allowed some dialects to be uh, preserved and some not. Mm -hmm. And then the recitations were codified by different scholars right. of the Tabi'in and the Tabi'i Tabi'in, okay? which would have been in their dialect. Right. And the dialect of Quraysh is what we now call Warsh. Warsh, an nafa nafa is the Qari of Medina. So the Haf Hafs is who? The Hafs the is of Kufa. Oh. Hafs so, and Asim of Kufa, yeah. So that's what we more commonly... Yeah, mm -hmm. and the Ahnaf took it. Oh. And and because of the spread of Ahnaf is the spread of Hafs. That's interesting. Yeah. Muslima says, I won't go by myself to Morocco. All right, if you're going to go there, uh, there, I think you should go to see Fez and Marrakesh, and you should attend the Quran readings after Maghrib and Fajr. They're beautiful. Hajra says, making dua for plan A, but also preparing a backup. Does that mean we don't have certainty for plan B? I think so. I mean, I, I wouldn't um, make a backup, personally. Put it all there. But if it's a if it's a worldly matter, then yeah, have a backup plan. Have you should have a win-win a if it's like a worldly plan, right? Speaking of uh, Morocco, by the way, uh, yeah, Mabel Jazudi is buried in in Marrakesh. Ma Mabel Jazudi, yes, he is. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. heard that they do. Uh, I think Thursday night going into Friday. Every, they, every city has Majadis Thursday night of Salah on the Prophet Okay. But I heard they, re they recite the entire Dalal Khairat oh, at yeah. his tomb. I yeah. don't know if that's coming across Morocco. All over Morocco. Uh, they're reading all of the Dalal Khairat. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, Sophia Lahyan will be in Marrakesh in August. Right? By the way, Ryan, why don't we advertise Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad's program? When is it and what's the website? Uh, Tomorrow, uh, Thursday, if we can, when you prepare it, inshallah, we can put it up. Uh, well, under base beat says, so what should I tell my dad? Should I tell him it's a difference of opinion rather than telling him that his being agnostic does not make sense? I think that showing him the inconsistencies of agnosticism uh, is the right way to go. Showing him that you can't be agnostic on what you don't want to believe. I'm agnostic on responsibilities, things that make me responsible, do's and don'ts. But I'm not agnostic on things that would I can use to argue against religion. Right? And by the way, for the brother... Um, what if there is a difference of, of opinion on this? He has to take it as it is. There, there is a difference of opinion. Right. There are other opinions. But I'm saying, even even if like that's the case, like let's yeah. say other matters that might not be palatable to the to yeah. individual, there are no differences of opinion on it. You have to just take it as it is. Exactly. It's not not everything has to be palatable to your, your Ex lifestyle, right? Exactly. Right. I mean, uh, does does your father have the same views towards same sex marriage? I don't think any uh, modern people are. Uh, you know, have the same strong stance against that. Mm -hmm. But in the United States, you were allowed to get married at very young ages if your parents consented right. and you physically could handle it. It's the same thing in Islam, right? Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As was a dad at 12, right? Sorry, Amr ibn As himself. He was a father at the age of 12. So, uh, so hey, Bawan, one of the producers of this program, by the way. Dr. Shadi and the Safina crew, assalamu alaikum. With elderly who are extremely ill, what is the limit to medical care and procedures? You're not really obligated to, 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 to do anything. Obligated, right? It's a sadaqah. It's mandub. Let's say someone's on a ventilator. You can pull the plug. It's not haram to pull the plug. You're not obligated to keep them hooked up charging $80,000 a minute, right, on that. Um, but when our elderly, m mother, father, mother-in-law, father-in-law, aunts, uncles, so the responsibility eventually will come down to someone in the family, mm -hmm. right? It can even fall on a nephew, can even, if there's no son. Like your uncle doesn't have a son or a daughter, only you. So the, you become obligated, mm -hmm. right? Your sister doesn't have anyone except you and she's elderly. Her dad's dead. She doesn't have kids or a husband. It's on you. So on and so forth. It trickles down eventually to somebody. Right. Right. I'm sending you a WhatsApp to the 
Okay. Sophia Lehian says, please remind us the waiting period after the first or second divorce. So, he divorces her in a period of tuhr. She's not on menstruation. Haid. She gets one haid. She gets a second haid. Right as soon as the third one starts, she can marry again. And he cannot revoke the divorce. He cannot take her back. And she can marry again. That's how simple it is. Can we have a Safina Saidi Morocco trip? I would love that. That would be amazing. Sign me up. Marrakesh is under $600 from Washington in September. Wow. Uh, what I love about Morocco and East Coast, it's a quick yeah, it's right hop there. across six the seven, Atlantic. Six, seven hours. Yeah. Just going across the pond. Hedra says, you miss a part of my question. Prophets are sinless, but can they commit mistakes? Mistake, they can make mistakes of the dunya. Yes, they can make a mistake. Make a mistake. Not, yeah. Not, wouldn't be say commit a mistake because the word commit means like you're intentionally doing something wrong yes they can make a mistake nothing wrong with that isn't it um, Imam al-Buti he explains that as one of the evidences that the Quran was not written by the Prophet mm-hmm. is that the Quran contains corrections of of the uh, Prophet's doubt uh, yeah. yeah like that a couple, I think Correct. once or twice uh, a couple times not only that there's he more because he said why would he write it and then correct himself there's many things. <laughs> Subhanallah, that's brilliant. If, he, if the Prophet is the author of the Quran, then why wouldn't he just correct the mistake that was in it? Right. right? Why would he then say, you did this, you should have done that? Right. right? Like you frowned at his face. And we, like we, our, our interpretation of that is that it's takhfif on the Prophet. Right. It's like you got so upset because he disrupted the meeting don't even be upset about them. Right. That's the that's our interpret. Right. Don't don't bother yourself being upset about them, yeah. right? Just preach to the one who loves you. So that's on one hand. On the other hand, it does on the outside. It appears that it's a correction. So if he's the author, why would why wouldn't he just erase it, yeah. right? And say, okay, from now on, that's not part of the surah anymore. How about the other one, which says surah al haqqa right? If he has not revealed anything of this verse, okay, well, or he says what we don't want him to say, amazing verse. It says if he says something that we don't want him to say, if he makes up things, we would take him by the right hand, slit his throat, and none of you can stop it. Who would write this about himself, right? Subhanallah Azim. And Allah Ta'ala does not speak like this except as a proof of prophethood. Mm-hmm. Not because the, prof, the, 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 the honor that Allah has placed on the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is beyond. That's why he's citing something that would never happen. Right? And, spe- and speaking in a way that he would never speak to his Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If he was to do that, which he would never do. Yeah. Right? Because it's literally impossible for a prophet to do such a thing. Right? Because they have to be trustworthy. Otherwise, the whole message is undermined. So, if you're writing a book and your enemies, Al Yahud, and the Mushrikeen are watching, why would you say this about yourself? Ma- Set ma- yourself up to be killed. Yeah, why, why would you say that about yourself? <laughs> well, we don't like what you say, so here we go. Montgomery Watt, he said an amazing thing. He said, The real proof of the prophethood of Muhammad, and he never became Muslim, but he said, like, The real proof is that Aisha asked him, Who is your most beloved wife? And he mentions another woman's name. Right? He says that's prophethood, right? Like, no man would ever do that, right? And knowing especially that Sayyidah Aisha, she gets angry, right? She has a temper. But um, another proof, if you love Khadija so much, why isn't she in the Quran? Why do you give a surah for Maryam? Why do you mention the white the mother of Musa? Why do you mention uh, the white the the wife of Abraham, the wife of Zachariah? Why do you mention all them? You never mention your own wife. Except, collectively, Ya Nisa and Nabi, lastunna ka ahadim min nisa in attaqaytun. Oh, wives of the Prophet, you're not like other women. If you have taqwa, you have double the reward. But if you have sins, you have double the punishment. Right? Stay in your home. Qarna fi buyutikun. And don't go out with the nakedness of the other women. And you're too honorable to be walking in the streets with everybody else. You're a lot like other women. You're too honorable to be walking. Right? Be 
have that respect that you you don't go out walking in marketplaces and stuff like that. Right. So, subhanAllah, a lot of things. Why didn't he make Sayyidah Aisha innocent earlier if the Quran was from him? Why wait one month in the Hadith al-Ifq and then her innocence comes in the Quran? Why not make her innocent way earlier? Mm-hmm. Uh, Osman Khan, what do you think about 20% of Gen Z identifying as LGBT? Is it safe to raise our children in this country? If it continues, we're going to run the country. They're not going to have any kids, right? If 20% of the population stop producing, we'll be running the country. Us and the Hasidic Jews, right? It's going to be us, Hasidic Jews, and Christians running the country. So maybe we should want the number to go up. Go up. Decrease your population even more, right? But is it safe in the country? Firstly, I think half of the identification is fashionability. It's just fashionable. It's like they had these executives one time and show us their, their high school yearbook and the stuff they did in high school. Like the one guy had a big fro like this. Another guy, he had like long, ridiculous uh, 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 hippie hair and a crazy beard, right? And different stuff that they were doing, right? And you fast forward, in 50 years, you're going to have any, some executive at some company saying, yeah, back in the day when I identified as Z, Right? It's just like a fashionable thing. All right, let's wrap up. It's almost two hours now. Sitting after Fajr till Ishraq, if we get up to change rooms or drink water, yes, you have nullified that reward. You have to stay in the same place. Okay. There's a charity in the UK called Stonewall. Oh, Muslims shouldn't... uh, They get $20 million a year. Stonewall is their bar, right? Stonewall, oh, the, the, isn't it? The, 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 it's the origin. It's like the, the, the origin the, of the whole gay movement. I think it was called Stonewall Riots or something. Yeah, like it's like the origin of the... Massacre. I don't know what yeah. it is. But. It's an it's it's LGBTQ charity. All we, can, all we have is sahba, but we have, we have sakina. If you can transmit that to your kids, they'll never leave Islam. This is the summary of it. Mm-hmm. Once, you trans, once that person gets one ray of that nur into his heart... He'll never leave Islam. And he'll fight anything that takes away that nur. If the Qur'an is eternally preserved, how do we say only some of the ahruf are preserved? Not all the dialects have to be preserved for the, for the Qur'an to be preserved. One is enough. One. Is, if, we only, if we lost all the masahif except for hafs, and all the hafaz of the, of the other recitations died, the Qur'an would still be preserved. Because what's, what's added or subtracted is just literally nuances. And no law or doctrine is added or subtracted by the, the dialects with the, each other. What is Wahtat al-Wujud? It's Wahtat al-Shuhud is more accurate. It's to see everything as a divine action. Everything is a divine act. Okay. Even the bad is something Allah permitted for wisdom. Aniko doesn't triple talaq fall under talaq al bid'ah. It is one. It is uh, talaq al bid'ah. You're sinful for that, and it applies to you. Nimra, sitting after Fajr till Ishraq. We answered that question. She must have put it here when she lost hope in uh, Instagram. <laughs> have you read Kitab al Tawheed? Uh, Kitab al Tawheed by Muhammad Abdul Wahab. I haven't read it because the places I go, they don't allow it in. No, but I did read it. Right. Everything is shirk and bid'ah for him. And kufr. Even the Salafiya don't teach it anymore. Like the Salafiya who's get their heads straight the and become Hanabila. They don't even teach it anymore. Right? Why seven ahruf revealed? Okay. At the same time of revelation. Reason being is so that the people who speak that dialect can feel that the Quran is speaking to them in their language as opposed to a foreign language. Or foreign dialect. Like I said, it... If a if a if a, if you take someone from Brooklyn, and you send him to Cambridge, England, to deliver a message, do you think he's going to get far? The accent's way off. If you take a guy from Cambridge and bring him to speak like that in Brooklyn, it won't be accepted, right? What's the dominant, if not only, language of Jannah? It's Arabic, according to the narrations. It's transmitted knowledge. Yep. Is there anything Sunnah for not eating with the mouth open? Yes not disgust, disgusting the people around you. Will we still have our personalities and desires in Jannah? Yes, and the desires will be stronger too because there's a lot more to do. So 
the desires will be st- times 70, the prophet said. Okay. You will be yourself and you will have a greater knowledge and a greater awareness, but you'll still be yourself. The Sayyidina Omar said, Ama'ana aquluna ya Rasulullah? Qala bala. Do we still have our intellects, our own? Are we still ourselves? He said, Yes. Okay. I have a pet turtle. Any hadiths about turtles? No. Why aren't we allowed to keep dogs? Malaika don't like dogs in the house. And that's prohibition for us. You can have a dog as a shepherd outside the house for sheep, for protection. A homeless man can have a dog as the seven people of the uh, sleepers of the cave had a dog for protection because they had no home. Okay, you need to protect your, yourself. You protect yourself with a German shepherd, right? Or, or a shepherd of dog of some sort. But not, you cannot have a dog inside the house. Would it be sinful if you released an invasive species into the wild? Yes, you'd be sinful for the harm. Like the people who released their, their python got out in Florida and now there's an epidemic. There's too many pythons in Florida and they're rewarding people to just kill them. Too many, too many pythons in Florida. Just to confirm, we are not allowed to make dua in salah during ruku'a and sajda. In ruku'a, we don't make dua, nor recite Qur'an, tasbih only. In sujood, we don't recite Qur'an and we make tasbih and dua. dua. The best place to make dua in salah is in sujood and you can do it in your own language if you don't speak Arabic. What about the, the dua of the Qur'an, of course, you can recite, yes. How do we... Is it nafil or... All oh, salah. So you can do it even in your own language in, in a fard? Yeah. Oh, okay. Dua if you don't speak Arabic. Right. If you can't, if you can't, you can speak Arabic, you can't express yourself in Arabic. Right. Mara Blanco says, how do we make excellent tawbah when we've fallen off a good streak of obedience? You non-stop tawbah. You just keep making tawbah. The best of tawbah is the, re- the non-stop, that you refuse to go away. Qawm Lut are having children using other means. It's not going to be as much. I guarantee you it's not as much. Not as much. And no people, no person will really tolerate a kid unless it's their kid. Right? And if it's his step kid, 75% tolerance. If it's a complete adopted kid, at some point you're just gonna you you may you can easily give up on them. Like, okay, you're 18, now leave. Right? By the way, there's no live stream tomorrow. I'm going under the knife. Make dua. Having surgery tomorrow. Major surgery? It's not major. It's uh, minor, alhamdulillah. But um and, and Thursday's up for grabs too. But wouldn't having plan B be doubting Allah's plan? It depends on the situation. But um, not necessarily. But if you, if you feel that having plan B is, doubting, is, is weakening my certainty, then don't have a plan B. Alhamdulillah, today we covered a lot of the Q&A because we didn't have a lot of Q&A yesterday. And we did a lot of uh, Q&A, which I always love to do. Last question is what is the recommended? Yes, according to Imam Malik, it is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had recited, and that is the recitation of Quraysh, therefore being Mandub. Okay. Uh, who is Malaika? Malaika is the plural for angels. Malaika is the plural for angels. If you if there was an android, could you marry one? The answer is you cannot marry robots. In Islam, okay. Not only that, you're wasting your emotions. Even if you speak about, like what we talked about before, uh, talking to the robot as if it's an animate object, your aql should say stop, because it's just it's a reflection of data. That's all it is. It's nothing else. قول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته